Go ahead. Three, two, one. Hello, we're Sardonicast. We remember it so you don't have to. Probably should have used that uh, last episode. Oh. Shouldn't I? I realized yeah. that that was a wrong. huge missed opportunity. Uh. Uh, we're Sardonicast. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm... <laughs> Did someone just crash what into your you, What did rim? you do? Oh, there's construction <laughs> going on outside. Yeah. Oh, really? I had to try to sleep. Yeah, every... Okay, so I bought this apartment <laughs> in fucking September, and then that's when they start constructing a fucking building right next to it. Awesome. <laughs> so, like, every morning from 8 to 12... Oh, anyway, uh, yeah. Ralph the Movie Same thing happened to me. YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. Yeah. Mm. yeah and I'm Alex. Shit. I'm Alex from I Hate Everything. Yeah. Mm. There's construction everywhere. So if you hear in explosions city. in the background, that's that's the construction. It's the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it's the Avengers. <laughs> I went to a '90s themed party, and uh, oh yeah, I mm-hmm. I constructed a uh, suit of armor made out of old '90s VHS tapes, and I guess we'll link <laughs> oh. to the picture in the description of this video. But I was yeah. quite proud of it. I want to see it. I want to see um, it on Twitter. It's right on your page. Yeah. Just scroll down my Did you already have all of those bit. VHS tapes or did you have to find them? Well, I I was I started collecting a couple. I was I was with my mom and I found like a old Lion King VHS tape. I'm like, "Wow, these are actually kind of valuable because I read some dumb clickbait article about how they're really valuable, but oh, really? they're not really. <laughs> I mean, they have to be like oh. mint condition. I guess I was just under the wrong impression." <laughs> and so my mom saw <laughs> oh, me right. buying this and then next thing I know, like next time I see her, she's like, "I've got all these VHS tapes for you." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh." Great. I mean, like some of them, <laughs> they're pretty cool to have. But I think she kind of um, over overestimated my um, interest in collecting these things. So I had a <laughs> shit ton of them. And then, you know, half an hour before going to the party, I'm like, I've got a great idea. And so I just mm. I duct tape a bunch of them together and showed up as a <laughs> 90s VHS man. And nobody else was really dressed up. <laughs> Chef like a couple someone, people. Someone in the team. Name. Someone photoshopped you on like the cross being crucified. Oh yeah, VHS tapes. On. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. <laughs> so I was I was briefly mentioning uh, this to to Alex before the podcast, and I told him that I brought pizza pops. He said he didn't know what pizza pops were. Mm-hmm. I don't know what pizza pops are. I I've never heard of pizza, pizza pops rolls either. Are. But what was the other one? There's pizza. I said it's like a hot pocket. Hot, hot pocket. pocket. Yeah. 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 And you didn't know what that is either. We don't have those in, in the UK either, as far as I'm aware. Oh my so God. I don't know what those are, so I have no reference point. Well, then what do you eat? What do you guys do there? You don't have uh, pizza rolls? You don't have uh, free speech? You don't have <laughs> anything? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Whoa. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought uh, all this fucking candy. And then mm-hmm. my roommate forgot to bring one of the bags of candy so now i ha- now i have like all these dumb kinder surprise and dino sours in my kitchen all right <laughs> give them out to our fans yeah it's not so bad well you if i send a kinder away. surprise to the states i'll get like arrested or something really oh, yeah. why i don't know they're like banned in the states aren't they kinder surprise they are they're, they're, yeah heard. well i've never even heard of them so oh. well they have they have like shitty pretend ones now Basically, okay, mm-hmm. the concept of a Kinder Surprise is it's this little, this chocolate egg, basically. It's two halves, and it's Kinder milk chocolate. And then inside, there's this there's this capsule that's fairly large. I don't know yeah. what to compare the size to. Oh, I'd say about things. the size of a golf ball. There's like a, a toy inside mm-hmm. that you can either put together, or it's, I guess now most of them, they're like already put together. But they got banned in the States because... The idea was that people wouldn't be able to figure out that you're not supposed to eat the plastic toy. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Americans are stupid, dude. And they find any reason to sue anyone for anything. So, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. So they have these pretend ones now where the toy and the chocolate are basically in separate packaging, but they sell it as one. <laughs> yeah. God. So you couldn't it's, it's possibly like split accidentally into two. eat it. <laughs> Yeah. What's even the point? Yeah. So I, I don't think I can send those overseas. I think that would be illegal because they're not they're not allowed in America. <laughs> All right, smuggle it. Smuggle it like the like the Mexican border. They smuggle the cocaine. The smuggle yeah. Kinder surprises. <laughs> oh, I just need the help of the CIA to smuggle in cocaine. No, you don't need the help of the CIA. You're not but they do all to of it. The CIA. They do. Where'd you hear this from? From my from my sources, 
<laughs> your sources. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> the CIA doesn't help with that. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, so I'm I think trying, we to, saw... I'm trying to think of a segue. Yeah. Well, okay. I was. I was. Well, let's just, I was. Let's just, just tired do it. of this conversation. Let's just fuck <laughs> off into Ready Player One. We'll get to Avengers oh, after that. Ready uh -huh. Player One. Um, I just released the video. Obviously, I have mm -hmm. criticisms. But what surprised yeah. me is that I think I rated it the highest out of all of us. You I'm did. Shocked. Yeah. Yeah. You gave I, it a five, didn't you? For people who, who don't know. Yeah, four time. or a five. But usually five. when I'm trying you, you to went decide with the between, five. yeah, I have to pick one. When we look back on this day, we're gonna go. Adam gave it a five. That fucking hack. <laughs> yeah. Because you're gonna look back and go like, wow, this is not a five. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought it was unbelievably terrible yeah <laughs> so yeah, let's let's discuss one. yeah i thought it was a an, an absolute worthless piece of trash film <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm serious uh, no, nothing ticks me off more than referencing stuff for no reason um mm -hmm. I, I, you know like the big bang theory gets a bad rap for just game of thrones and then the side <laughs> laughs so, yeah like, what, what is the value of that and game of mm -hmm. thrones was that the movie to me that if yeah. you take the references out of the movie, what is even left? You mean Nothing. Big Bang Theory Nothing. was that the movie? Not... No, um, Ready Player you One was Ready that Player kind One of joke. The... the humor. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you said Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's what I'm mixing up all my references. No. Um, uh, that, yeah, that kind of humor, that referential, the reliance on referential humor. Um, mm -hmm. Well, not even just humor, just it. references in general. It's references made by someone who doesn't understand the thing they're parroting or incorporating in the movie they did nothing clever with anything yes it yeah. all boiled down to okay we have the iron giant so we're gonna have him punch people the iron we giant have... was the worst one because yeah. it completely contradicts what that character represents <laughs> <laughs> and i get it even seen it but but again That's it's funny. like stupidity like let's take everything that makes these things interesting and boil it down to they just they punch things that whole shining segment i adam i believe you liked it the Shining. I liked part. the that first. Least I, I liked enough of it because I, I enjoyed. <laughs> you liked most of it. Well, yeah, up until they, uh, it started getting iffy when they did the um, room two thirty seven scene, and it wasn't the same lady. I would have rather. Yeah, had... that was half of it. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. I, no. I, that was like half the scene, though. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what you're I'm talking about starting... when when he got into room two thirty seven, it was like a minute into the scene. Oh yeah. That's what that's I before that uh, before that point I was kind of enjoying that scene. I really appreciated okay. that they added some like subtle um, like film grain aesthetic to it to make it look as though they were actually a part of the movie. It was very subtle too. It wasn't like overbearing, mm -hmm. ridiculously in your face. I love that they used parts of the film soundtrack in that scene. Not just in parts where it's like, oh, something's happening in the movie, but characters would be figuring out information, learning things as they go, and one of the themes, one of the songs from The Shining would play as though it's relating to what they're figuring out in the movie, not necessarily what is happening in The Shining universe. So I like how they incorporated that. And uh, yeah, I, I like that they used real footage from the movie. Uh, and it was all fairly faithful up until the Room 237 scene where it wasn't the same actress. But, you know, I can understand why, because that would have been much more difficult to try and recreate. Uh, and then the floating dancing zombies was stupid. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, when that scene started, I thought what you thought. Like, oh, this is going to be really cool. I can't wait to see what they do with it. And then technically it was really well done. But mm. again, he goes into, well, the elevator opens, first of all. And the blood comes out, and he goes mm -hmm. like, whoa, <laughs> whatever. And then he goes in that room, and then the witch just has a knife now for some reason, and starts trying to stab him. And then Jack Nicholson's, uh, CGI Jack Nicholson starts trying to kill him. And it's like, you guys completely missed the point of what The Shining is and why it's scary. And again, they devolve it mm -hmm. into stupid shit. And that's how everything in the movie is for me. I was kind of just hoping that one of the characters would open a door and they find a man sucking a dude's dick in a bear costume. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> what annoyed me the most out of that Shining scene was it just, there was no clever spin, there was no clever twist on it, it wasn't yeah. used in an interesting way, it was just recreating scenes. And it's like, well, if, you're, if all you're doing is referencing better films, 
all it made me want to do was go and watch The Shining. It made me want to oh, yeah. leave the theatre and run home and watch The Shining. And I would have every scene was anything. like that. There was, this, there was the scene where they referenced Back to the Future with the music in a, in a similar way to the way you said. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, Back to the Future is a great film. Much better than this film. What, what's your point here? Yes, we, we all know Back to the Future is great. You're not adding anything to this. It's not clever. It's just a reference. It's a film that doesn't stand on its own at all because nothing it does separate from the references is good, even remotely. The characters all suck. The humor is terrible. There's not one good joke, I think, in the entire movie. There oh, is yeah. one good I joke, mean... actually. There's the one joke the the bad guy makes where he tries. To, he's trying to figure out how much ad space he can fit in the headset before it gives the person wearing yeah. it a seizure. That was the only funny joke. Mm. rest of it, awful. Well, I mean, it's not... I don't really think it was trying to do anything particularly substantive with the references it was making. It was clearly just designed to be banking on nostalgia. It, it called itself a mm -hmm. pop culture odyssey, is what it called itself, right? <laughs> and so it's supposed to play on this idea that everybody's fantasy is like, oh, I wish I could cl climb a mountain with Batman. And that's literally one of the examples they give at the beginning of the movie. It's like, you can go yeah. mountain climbing with Batman. It's like, oh, wouldn't you love to do that, audience member? And that's literally the entire movie. So the only reason I don't think it's terrible, even though obviously I think I have many of the same criticisms as you do, uh, I don't think it's terrible because it's not really trying to be anything super substantive in the first place. It's literally just Steven Spielberg dumb pop culture odyssey have fun in vr sort of thing and i had fun although i was i was still infuriated while i was having fun yeah i wanted that out of it but i got nothing out of it because there was nothing creative in it they did nothing with anything and mm -hmm. like even the, like, the world itself that's for sure I did definitely really? Not I was expecting it's creativity. Steven Spielberg in 2018. All right, creativity, creativity with the visuals at least. Mm -hmm. I wanted some fun action and some stakes and whatever. It was like, yeah, everyone's in this fucking video game and it all looks fake. And I get it all looks fake because it's a video game. But like, <laughs> why do I care? Just turn off the game and go outside. I give a shit. But the Oasis, man. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> Oasis. And then at the end of the movie, they act like, oh, well, I'm going to shut off the Oasis two days out of the week. So you could go outside and like the whole movie the point was the, the real world sucks Yeah, and so everyone wants to live in this game and now the point of the movie is the real world's actually great. Wow. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I mean the, the they were really trying to ham fist a uh, Positive message in at the end. They were really trying to be like well, we're not trying to glorify escaping reality Even though we just did for the whole most of the movie. <laughs> Let's pretend like we didn't what about the whole aspect of I, I i guess this is this is kind of a major spoiler for the movie so spoilers yeah. if you i wouldn't say anything we've said so far is like too big of a spoiler um, like it's not well, a very okay, hard I'll to try and keep movie, it vague but, but sure all right there's, keep it vague there's a character who's there are two characters i guess who are kind of set up to as being mysterious and they keep saying you don't want to see me in real life you might be disappointed <laughs> or, or, <laughs> things along that line and then when one of them is revealed it's like is that is that really the problem you it's just like it's so condescending and embarrassing i don't think that's a spoiler that's like a fucking trope at this point oh no yeah. i've yeah. got a birthmark but i'm actually a model i'm so <laughs> ugly <laughs> oh no i so so cringe at that like, part too you wouldn't love me in so real life i know i'm a model on every part of my body except this one spot that i could easily cover up with my hair i'm just so ugly i'm not pretty at all i look fine anyway <laughs> yeah yeah and and the two Asian kids that they live, everyone lived a block away from each other, and that made the movie worse too. Because that was like, hilarious. Oh, this, uh, no, because it makes everything feel so much smaller scale than it really mm -hmm. is. Oh, yeah. And it's like if they had just never met, it would have been a better movie. Everybody's local. Yeah. yeah. The point is, everyone over the internet joins forces to fight this conglomerate, and it's like, no, all these people just meet in real life and. The, what they do in the but video they never game now, met in real life until that point exactly but they know who they are doesn't doesn't he just walk up to him it's, it's like, daito it's daito yeah <laughs> mm. just the worst script did you even think the worlds were interesting because i thought they did nothing in, like no creative visually mm. creative with it no, it's it all blue and purple the shining was the only looking. like kind of fun scene for me in terms yeah. of like a visual presentation the rest of it i was just like I was I was just passively watching, you know, a dumb popcorn stupid movie, you know, and I was just kind of hate, okay though, with it. You hate well, it. Well, okay, let's let's <laughs> say this then. I rated this movie 
a five, and then I rated, you know, a lot of other uh, uh, Marvel movies also a five. You know, it's kind of in the same the same vein, but I guess my enjoyment for I'd, this I'd one say was Marvel a little movies higher. Are, are so much better than this. Yeah, even the some of them. Marvel movies. Nah, uh, yeah, even I mean, the worst ones. Yeah. Even the worst ones aren't as pandering as this. I feel like I feel like. This movie didn't really try to be anything much more than what it eventually was. Whereas I feel I feel like a lot of Marvel movies try to be a lot more than what they are. At least they're trying though. At least yeah, they're trying to, to do like something. It's like effort. It's, it, it was just embarrassing. I thought from beginning to end it was just <laughs> I was my head in my hands. I was laughing at it because I thought it was so ridiculously cringy. Oh yeah, me too. Mhm. I think the biggest problem comes from why did they adapt this book? If this is the material, if this is what they're basing it off, and you, and you know, <laughs> there's like a whole section of the book that's like dedicated to um, how the, the main character jerks off or something. You should yeah. find out awesome. and, and read it. It's, it's really, really funny, that page. And it's like, oh my God, am I supposed to be taking this seriously? This is what you chose to adapt into a movie. So from the get go, when the material was such garbage, I, I, you can't. You can't turn the the this kind of shite into something workable. Like mm. from the get go, it was screwed. It doesn't matter what director or or who you get to adapt it or how many visual effects you throw at the screen. It's just shallow and vapid. And I thought it was yeah. nauseating at points too. Yeah, that's that's what I, that's exactly what I was thinking because I was trying to figure out what's wrong with it. And at its core, it's just fucked. The the, yeah, the story it. itself is dumb. And doesn't make any sense, and the world makes oh, yeah. no sense, and there's nothing you can really do with it. And if you find it fun, because clearly people love this movie and love yeah, this yeah. book, right? You can say it's fun, and I, I thought it was fun. And I'm like, okay, fine, you thought it was fun. But I didn't find it to be fun at all. Mm -hmm. So you can't even argue with me, because all my points, our points are pretty, you know, hard to argue. The, the I think. thing I found interesting was that for everyone who says the film is bad, they say, oh, the book was really good, though. And then there are people that yeah, say, people oh, say so that. It's, it's not, it's not yeah. surprising because the book was so terrible. Like, every yeah. single person seems to have a completely different point of it's reference. It's so divisive. Yeah. Yeah, which right. is really mm -hmm. odd to me. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought Ready Player One would be so divisive? <laughs> a <sighs> controversial film not ready for our time. <laughs> were there people? <laughs> were there people in your theaters like laughing and clapping whenever there was a reference to something? Uh, no, but oh my god, it's no. the Iron Giant. We oh don't do that. Gives a shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, you people are polite. That happens every Marvel movie, movie though. Marvel movies, I like it. Marvel okay. movies, it's fun. That's part of the experience. All right. <laughs> we don't even do that here either. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You, just you guys know how to have fun. <laughs> I think that literally is it. We're not allowed to emote in any way. <laughs> <laughs> emoting in any ways impolite mm. mm -hmm. yeah i am um, i felt intellectually offended by ready player <laughs> one but i i didn't feel offended when it came down to like entertainment i i, I was entertained i was never bored you know it moved really? along it was a fairly really? long movie and it kept my attention i i thought the film was so predictable oh it was insanely through, predictable. I really needed to pee I really needed to mm. pee, and I was like, I was just analyzing the way the film was going and pinpointed the perfect place to go to the toilet, and I mm. missed nothing. Um, yeah, that's the kind yeah. of level it was. That's how I felt. When that girl showed up and gave the whole speech about, you know, I don't want you to see me in real life. That's, that was so I, funny. I honestly, thought of, I honestly thought of leaving the theater. I was like, I, I really don't want to sit through the rest yeah, of this. Yeah, I thought I that a couple people. times, too. I thought yeah, it was so like, this awful. Is just not, this is not a movie for me at all. There comes a point where a movie is so formulated that it just becomes really funny to me, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't find anything funny about it. It was hilarious. I found the whole movie <laughs> to be really funny. But I think yeah. I feel like the movie was trying to be funny, like, in a tongue-in-cheek way. And that's yeah, why yeah, I didn't in like ways, it. In because ways. if it's intentional, then I'm like, that's not funny then. It's funny when you're unintentionally the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like Cloverfield what? Paradox or something. I mean, overall, I just I don't think it took itself extremely seriously. And, you know, it would have been cool to have a movie that took itself more seriously for sure. But I just mm -hmm. I, I felt like I got a Steven Spielberg pop culture odyssey VR film pretty much as oh, described, sure. you know, I don't feel if like it's free I was, on uh, YouTube. Then maybe that would be all right. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah it should have been like a 15 minute long YouTube video. Yeah, also, Minecraft is a thing stupid, in the but... in the future. 
<laughs> did you notice yeah, that? No, that did you notice Minecraft that VR Most world? of the references were um, Microsoft owned, so there were lots of Halo yeah. soldiers oh, yeah. running around. There was the Gears of War thingy. Um, there the were Battle five Toads Master were Chiefs that all looked yeah, the same yeah, yeah, yeah. for some reason. Yeah. There was Minecraft. There's Spartan people Microsoft would change it up. Well, yeah, I mean, apparently Battletoads had a massive resurgence in the year 2044. Yeah, who it's just because Microsoft own it. They must have had some deal. They actually do own it. Remember, yeah. Remember yeah. the Twitch reference? They're like, man, I gotta go on my Twitch stream, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, Give me a fucking break. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's tons of issues. Just hopeless. Yeah. Just Bad fucking issues. hopeless. I mean, if you find it fun, good for you. I'm not gonna knock you. Yeah. You're probably a young teenage boy. It's made for teenage boys. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so if you're a teenage boy, mm. I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't know. It. It's trying to cash in on, on a lot of 1980s nostalgia. I That's true. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I think it's also it. made for man children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man children. <laughs> I, I, I That's go also grow what up, was so wrong so. about it. Like, <laughs> it was so full of, of references to like a target demographic spanning so wide. They're trying to catch this huge net. And it ultimately mm -hmm. is not satisfying to any of them, in my opinion. Like I was, the part that really pissed me off was when, for no reason at all, like a chest burster just bursts out of a character. And oh yeah, like, look, Alien, ah. remember that? And then just gotcha. takes it off, and it's like whatever, it wasn't relevant to anything. Just a little reference for you. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. That's the whole film, just in a nutshell. Every single scene boils down to that. Yeah. Uh huh. That's what about right. when it's like the, the, it's like the camera pans over and it's like, look, there's the nuke. That if it goes off, everybody dies. Yeah, let's move on. That's hilarious. Like, fuck you, movie. You think I'm that goddamn stupid? It's a purchase. Why they design a nuke in the, in the game that blows everything up? Who the it fuck? It just makes, <laughs> makes no sense. That they establish rules that they break. They introduce it the last five seconds of the fucking movie. They're like, oh, we have this bomb that blows everything up. Who who added that in? It destroys every player and item in the sector. <laughs> yeah, in the sector. Yeah. I think you Ugh. said in your review, Adam, you're like, what if, what if some guy just grinded to do that? They, Someone would, guaranteed. They totally do not understand the gamer mindset. There, there would be yeah. people just littered all over this place, just killing people and destroying everything, yeah. just for the fuck of it, for fun. Well, like, the, yeah, the first secret was built on the fact that no one has yeah. ever driven backwards in a racing game. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. bitch, in I five that, years. Like, the first thing in a Mario Kart you, you do, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like... It just had it completely deaf in every way imaginable. It's hilarious. There's that's there's the scene in the movie where the old guy has like an earpiece on and he's trying to talk to the main kid like he's hip and cool, and that I think that's Spielberg. That's, <laughs> that reminds me a lot of just he has people telling him all these references and he tries to make a movie out of it, but he really doesn't understand gaming culture oh, of course. or what anything would be like if this were to actually happen. So I got nothing out of this movie. It was just Spielberg on autopilot. You could just tell it's like, yeah. well, it's, it's, it's like him just going to his nine to five. Like I don't he, think he it's that. I think Spielberg wants to make kids movies now. He's made that clear. And yeah. sometimes he's better at it. Like, I think Tintin's pretty good. And sometimes, yeah. I, again, it's like this This concept is so just garbage from the, from the get go. No matter what you do with it, I don't think you can make it work. Unless you go totally batshit insane with it, like Crank 2 or something, which is not going to happen. If they had anime girls and Ugandan knuckles, it would have been great. Yeah, then it would have been great. If it was VR chat, the movie, hell yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious, yeah. But that's never going to happen. Except it's that, but watered down and boring and way too long yeah, and full of that's exactly annoying like, references. Like an old man saw his son play VR and made did the out. um Did the character designs bug you guys at all? Um, I found them very odd. For, there was like a main character. furry. And that's it. I, I didn't even notice the furry. <laughs> I, I bet, Adam, you were looking for it. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Where are all Unless, the furries at? I was just wondering, I don't know, is that cat person that tricked him supposed to be like an actual character? Or was that I just like... I don't even remember. That was I like before the, slow mo before oh, the oh, Zemeckis and, cube. And TJ Miller. What did oh. you guys think? Oh, no. TJ Miller. Holy shit was he bad. What a, like, what a useless character. He didn't even have to be in the movie. When he was did this? fucking nothing. <laughs> Who was what he? What did he do? The villain. It? The War World I, of Warcraft he looking was, guy. He was the other villain. Oh. Oh, yeah. He's the one who gave him the bomb, right? No, he gave him the shield for the bit at the, the end. The shield? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. The That's magic right. spell. He gave him something. And yeah. he had, like, back problems. Yeah. Yeah, something. implying that, like, he's fat and at a keyboard kind of thing. Yeah. Because yeah. he plays nice. World of Warcraft funny, funny, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all gamers, dude. Lel. Uh. Keck. 
Fuck. Fuck Is this that film. enough? Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> Fuck. It's, Fuck it. That's how I, I feel it, about it. It's so awful. What would you give mm-hmm. it out of 10 or 5 because you do stars? I have one easily. I give it half, a half of one. <laughs> half? Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> I fucking hate this film. Yeah. Yeah. I hate I do it with a passion. One to five stars. So. I would give yeah, it a four star. or a five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I don't think it was like incompetent from like a filmmaking perspective. I think it was. It was just it I like think, its yeah. only goal it was, was just so to be dull. dumb and make money, and it did that. I mean, so. even even the real world stuff. That's what the bad. Transformers it, First of all, like yeah, exactly. And the real world stuff looked like fucking Saving Private Ryan or something. It had like the same color palette. It's like all washed out and white and flat looking. I'm like, what is this? Mm-hmm. I thought this was more competent than a Transformers film. Um, They're about as consistent no, with their world building as a Transformers film. Like, yeah. Nothing makes any sense. This was some less visual stuff I like me. in Transformers. No, eh. I, I can't even agree with you there. Dude. I mean, the later Transformers, sure. But like Transformers 1... It got some cool visuals in there. What, Megan Fox? Yeah, Ma- Megan Fox. I mean, yeah, got that right. motorcycle that shot. Uh, yeah, that's the second one, dude. You got to yeah. stay up on some your great visuals. <laughs> I don't care. All right. Yeah, I, I bet you don't. Know, because it's just it's shit. I don't care either. I, I stopped watching, I think, after the second movie. The second movie was yeah. the one that I quit on. Was that decision. the one where she was high on pot brownies? The, the yeah, mom? yeah, that's uh, that was a Buff's bad mother. scene. That was a terrible scene. Oh, they're scene. all bad scenes. I mean, that movie was written during the writer's strike, so how can you blame written. them? There was just so much that didn't make sense. Yeah. Well, because they shot the action scenes first and wrote the script later because the writer's <laughs> strike. Do you know that whole fucking thing? Yeah. <laughs> they had to shoot the movie, so Michael Bay is like, let's just shoot some action scenes and the writers will figure it out later on. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to make a movie. Why would the old robot have a cane and a beard? If he's just old, wouldn't he just be a regular robot with some rust? Why is there an old robot? Yeah. Do they they age like humans? What the? <laughs> Did they build him a cane and a beard when he was a young robot, and he just it's just coincidental that he is now being discovered in the dirt as an old robot? It just that, that's the in. one where um, SpongeBob voice is like a really racist character. He's like an ice cream. Oh yeah, man. the step and fetch it bots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh boy, mm. yeah. Those they cut those out of three, and the rest of them, because oh, yeah, like, yeah, th- that was a little too far. We're, we're sorry about that. <laughs> if Michael Bay says it's racist. That's when you know it's really bad. <laughs> there was a really great uh, compilation that was online probably five <laughs> years ago of all of the racist shit in Michael Bay movies, and it was so <laughs> good. And I think it got copyright claimed, and just nobody uploaded it after that point. But it was so awesome. Mm. It was really Was it funny. just every film he's made in whole from start to end? <laughs> it was literally just a, a mashup, like a, a compilation of, of every time there's been some very <laughs> exaggeratedly uh, yeah. ebonic character or, mm-hmm. you know, just, like a just crazy where they're clearly just stereotype. being used for like comic relief. But, it, it, you know, it would be fine in one movie, but it's like every movie sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It was just a, it was just a funny juvenile. compilation to me. <sighs> Uh, all right. You want to get off this and talk so don't about watch Ready movie? Player One in conclusion. Yeah, don't don't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So how do you like uh, the new Purple Shrek movie? Oh, Purple Shrek. Purple Homer comes down and wrecks everyone. Uh huh. I want to know what Alex thinks because you kept your ratings hidden on Letterbox. Yeah, mm, yeah. Smart boy. I'm just getting ready to to go on the the defensive because um. I thought it's it's one of the best Marvel movies since the Avengers. Um, hmm. I thought it was excellent. I'm not gonna attack you for feeling that way. I didn't think yeah. that, but I thought it was good. I thought it was pretty good. It's it's the most engaged I've been in one of them in a long time. Um, I, yeah, I gotta say, for a movie that's like almost three hours long, I was never bored. Yeah, hardly ever bored. Yeah, it lost me a bit here and there, not from boredom, just like what kind yeah. of confusion. I, but like, I, I think I was for never a film. Bored that is trying to attempt so much on the scale that it is, doing something kind of unheard of um, mm. in in cinema, just so many characters, and it not being a, a DC clusterfuck, <laughs> nauseating mess yeah. with, you know, really well-planned-out action scenes and fun character interactions, and, and a really interesting villain that, that binds it all together. Like, I don't think anyone was quite expecting the film to 
really rely on Thanos as much as it did and develop him. Yeah, and it, I, I was saying from the get-go that the film is will work for me as long as the villain who has been hyped up for six years so he had to, he had to be impressive or developed in some way because you can't expect us to automatically like care just because he was shown at the end of a film and then after credits six years ago you know mm -hmm. what what movie did they do that in the first, the avengers, first avengers oh really where he does a cheeky little smile really? at the camera and it's like yeah yeah, yeah wow the, the very end credits and then and, he shows yeah. up again in guardians yeah he was in guardians of Age of oh. Ultron. Mm -hmm. but that's it yeah because usually those after credits things happen and i'm just like i I have no idea what this is and I just assume it's one of the other <laughs> movies that I haven't yeah. seen so I yeah. usually just forget about them immediately Yeah. Mm -hmm. someone next to me goes that's it. Thanos I'm like oh yeah okay so you guys yeah. were kind of on the same page you gave it what like a, a 6 out of 10 the pair of you? yeah that's what I gave it what'd you think yeah. Adam? well I, I, give it, I give it a 6 numerically but I agree with Alex that it's the best and most engaging Marvel Avengers film in a long time. I would call it better than the first Avengers for my own personal experience. I didn't really like the first Avengers that much. No. I don't give a shit about Hulk. You know, the more he's in a movie, the yeah. more I don't like it. I don't give a shit about Iron Man. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I really don't like a lot of the original Avengers characters. Really? Really? Yeah. They're my favorite ones. <laughs> I know. They're oh, everyone's wow. favorites. Yeah, they're my favorite too. Plus Spider Man. I like Spider Man. Who do you like out of the new bunch? Ant Man? No. Black Panther? Okay, <laughs> so who? Doctor Strange? <laughs> oh yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm I trying to actually... trying to even think of any that are remotely interesting. I kinda I kinda like Doctor Strange, although I didn't see his solo film. But All right. So what <laughs> you didn't see his solo film. This, this movie kinda made me want to see the Doctor Strange film. Um I like Spider Man. Um, I enjoyed Thanos. I like the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, but I found their scenes to be really shitty in this movie. I really did not really? get behind the humor in this movie at They're all. They're the I only. Found it very forced. I thought it was very consistent with the other movies. Mm. The, yeah, the me humor. too. I thought every, that was I... so impressive to me. Like every character has been written by a different set of uh, you know writers and directed by different directors, and they still felt like the same characters to me. Um, yeah. So seeing them play off e of each other was really effective yeah. and, a, and a huge payoff because for, uh, there, there were points in this, was it, this is the 19th movie or something, where I've mm -hmm. only watched them almost as if it were homework, you know, where it's like, mm -hmm. I know <laughs> they're building to something with this and I'm really not that interested in this character, but whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. watch it anyway and they're, they're usually fine. Um, but mm -hmm. this, it, it made me appreciate things that I didn't, really like as much anymore like i was never that crazy about doctor strange but seeing him in this context playing off other characters makes him more interesting to me it makes everything that i've invested into him much more satisfying yeah. and it felt that way all around from every character i've seen mm -hmm. this is the first movie where i finally liked thor thor, thor was actually yeah. interesting yeah yeah and he like He's now this tragic guy who has nothing left in his life, and it's like he's, he just wants to fucking scene. kill Thanos. And I'm great like, scene. yeah, I, I thought so too. And I'm like, well, Thor's actually a good character now. He's not just like a joke, and he's still kind of a joke. But I really enjoyed the Thor scenes and storyline in this film, but that mm -hmm. is not enough to make me want to watch any of the Thor solo movies. For uh, sure, there's no reason to yeah, except the third it. one. Yeah, so Ragnarok one's okay. you might enjoy. Yeah, yeah, Ragnarok, when he's on the uh, trash planet, yeah. I thought was pretty yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else, eh. Yeah, I really hate yeah. the Hulk. I really am Why'd not you hate interested the in uh, The Hulk did character. nothing in this either. Right? Yeah, I don't think Mark Ruffalo plays Hulk very well. I, I'm, I don't buy it at any point. Really? I don't really care about the whole me versus the Hulk conflict that he has going on. Transform! No! I'm like, uh Get it over with. Like, I don't care. You know, nothing. That's the only thing that feels <laughs> inconsistent. Because yeah. some movies he can control the Hulk, and some movies he can't. And then some movies the Hulk is out, and Bruce Banner can't become Bruce yeah. Banner. It's just like, what like the filler. fuck is even going on with this character? Yeah, that's how I feel. It's just annoying now with him. But mm -hmm. I feel everyone else worked. Oh, I also didn't like what they did with Star Lord. Star Lord does something toward the end that I thought was really stupid. Well, yeah, Thanos. we're not gonna See, yeah, spoil it, but I mean, yeah, yeah, it's what it was. That was definitely a moment where I was like, "Meh, this is a 
this has to happen yeah. for the script, I guess. <laughs> you know? That yeah, yeah. that's why like, it was you very... have to have someone do something fucking stupid or else everything's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought it was um kind of frustrating in the right way almost because I, I i bought right. that that character would do that because he does something very similar in the, in his previous movie he is kind yeah. of a fucking idiot so if anybody's going to do something stupid it might as well be him yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. um so people I thought that was tried consistent. to defend it and i'm like yeah I, I see where you're coming from it's just when i was watching that i feel like if a character would naturally do something i would be behind it but i just i didn't feel it at that point Hmm. I'm, I That's felt fair. like I've they heard had to develop people. that more to make me, to make me buy that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they have developed well, without spoiling it what that is, like built to for mm-hmm. plenty of movies now, and it's like, well, I think a lot of people would act irrationally in that kind of situation, but yeah. that didn't bug me. But there was something uh, that kind of bugged me that I didn't mention in my review because I forgot to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't care what kind of camera tricks or visual effects that they do with Peter Dinklage. He still doesn't look big, you know, the, <laughs> the, oh, body, okay. the body purport, even if I had never seen him in another movie before, I think that there's something, you know, that, that goes on in the human brain when it comes to interpreting proportions of like, of facial features or head to body ratio, et cetera, where I'm always going to look at someone like that and be like, yeah, that's a little person. He doesn't look mm-hmm. like a big person. <laughs> he's a little. Well, they a say spoiler? in the movie. They say in the movie he's a dwarf. Oh, how like, does that make sense though? Don't don't worry about it. I mean, I don't fucking know, but okay. they say I he's might a have dwarf. missed that he's line. Just big. Yeah, I mean, I might be wrong. I remember hearing that he's a giant dwarf. Yeah, he's a giant dwarf. I okay. did not like anything with that. Really, I can deal with that. I, I thought I, th- I thought that was kind of laughable, but that I like kind of funny. Dinklage, so, oh yeah, yeah I like him too. Uh, mainly, I think what you said, Adam, about the humor, it didn't work for me. Yeah. I like the Guardians humor more than you did. And I like everything with Spider-Man because Spider-Man's always funny. But the rest of it kind of fell flat. Uh, I didn't like the music as usual. And I noticed mm. this time they, they started didn't taking like the tracks. They took tracks from Game of Thrones and just redid them. What are those oh, called? Temp uh, tracks? Yeah, temp. Where you just like make something that sounds similar. Yeah, there were. Yeah. I've n- I noticed at least one of those in the movie. Yeah. The last song in the movie is is literally the Stark theme from Game of Thrones. <laughs> if yeah. you want to play it like side by side, yeah. Uh, there was quite a few <laughs> moments like that. Temp music is an absolute cancer on mm-hmm. the industry when it when it comes to music composition, and every composer yeah. fucking hates it. Um, I will suggest mm-hmm. that we link a uh, the Marvel Symphonic Universe video by Every Frame of Painting in the description yep. so that yeah. people very good. get a good idea of what temp music is and just how cancerous it is. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great video about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, there's quite a few complaints that Marvel has fixed up, but that not that one. The yeah. visual effects and the look of this movie in terms of the colors and everything was was gorgeous. One mm-hmm. of the most like visually ambitious mov- movies I've seen in a while because most of it's CGI, even when you don't notice it. I was looking at the behind the scenes and like 99% yeah, yeah. of the movie is CG. Mm. <laughs> you could barely fucking tell at some, yeah. por- some parts. It's a very expensive film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it costs it's the same about... amount as, uh, as Justice League. Um, <laughs> you can tell. It really How embarrassing is that? I kept thinking about it Justice is... League and comparing it in my head and being like, wow. Yeah, so this is that's... this is what happens when you do it right, and the other one is when you do it wrong. All right, got it. Well, like, they were so disorganized with Justice League that they spent thirty million dollars, you know, yeah. CGing out Henry Cavill's mustache. <laughs> that's why, because they had no fucking idea what they were doing. That's why it cost yeah, yeah. so much. No, and Marvel's like, like we know where to put all the money to. Yeah. Mm. How much did it cost? Justice League. Um, mm-hmm. Infinity War. Both of them cost three hundred mil. Um, three hundred million. So. Someone, someone told me four hundred million for for uh, Infinity War. Okay, and Infinity War was is, is weird because it was shot um, as two movies. They shot two movies worth of material with like the mm-hmm. same budget. So I guess they're just kind of oh, okay. evening out at about three hundred mil. Um, okay. The budget for Tom Cruise's The Mummy was one hundred twenty-five million. Mm-hmm. Well spent. Yeah, I thought it looked great. <laughs> I watched that again the other day. It's pretty good. Why? It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to torture my friends a little. Uh-huh. I get it. I mean, what were you guys like expecting um out of the out of Infinity War? Um, Nothing really. 
I never expect Nothing. anything from them. Well, we kind of like, let, let me just have fun it. at the theater, and I did. Oh, so, okay, let I me rephrase that. What what would have to be delivered with it to make you guys like it more than you currently do? Um, because well, it's basically fan service. The movie. It's the final payoff for all the investment. The twenty nine hours of investment. Quote already... unquote final payoff. <sighs> no, no, no. <laughs> like part one, yeah. final. Two. <laughs> I mean, still, it's well, still not it, even after part two. It's not the final. Yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, it's this the is, end of this, this chapter. This is just the implied all these characters. crescendo to the mini series of this film franchise. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling mm -hmm. at the end of part two, it's going to be a point where, if you want to, you can say, "Well, that was a complete story. Um, I can leave this but now no and will. feel satisfied." Whereas yeah, with all the I'm previous ones, it ha it hasn't quite felt like that. It's always felt building, and there is mm -hmm. a sort of finality to it in my mind. Um, I... Not quite yet. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to see with the next one. Um, Wouldn't it be fucking yeah. funny if like the post credit scene to Avengers Part Two is just another Thanos but different? You know, like ooh, we gotta. <laughs> we're like... just gonna tease this other villain here. Wait, like yeah. fucking ten years while we <laughs> uh -huh. dick you around it's and give Thanos you blue again. balls. It's Thanos, but he's orange. Mm. Yeah, a, big, a, big, a big problem I, I can foresee them having is you quite literally cannot have stakes higher than this movie. So where do you go from here? Do the same thing, but different. Everything's going <laughs> to seem trivial in comparison. Because like, <laughs> we just watched the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp or whatever. And mm -hmm. that film's just like, yeah, whatever. It's just, I want to see what happens in the, in this world, like, not even world, universe-affecting thing that we've just seen a few months ago when that film will be coming out. And it's like, yeah. in comparison, it just feels inconsequential, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even need this Avengers movie to happen for me to feel that way about all the other Marvel movies. That's, you're describing exactly how I felt. Like, I don't care it's really inconsequential in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of well, things you know i mean i don't feel that way there's plenty to like get attached to in terms of the characters and how they're eh. growing and changing uh-huh you're Not just a hater me. adam yes. you're goddamn yeah, hating you, ass hater. Hate yeah. you spent half your review complaining about the audience <laughs> I, you know what? how obnoxious and annoying they are i spent about i don't know probably a third of the review <laughs> talking about that it was a short review. <laughs> oh okay i'm glad you counted it exactly I, I could have just not talked about it and my review would have been like a minute or two shorter but i feel like yeah. there's nothing wrong with mentioning how marvel audiences are some of the most obnoxious theater goers in any film experience <laughs> and that's ever, part so. of the experience for me is yeah. going there and everyone claps at everything and laughs at everything it's like it adds it's like a sitcom it's like being in a sitcom audience I can't even marvel relate. audiences I've never and star it. wars audiences are both pretty fucking cancerous when it comes yeah to see the star wars is different because i take star wars more seriously than i do the marvel stuff which is yeah. silly so like when darth vader comes out you shouldn't be like ooh and clap it's like darth vader's fucking intimidating Woo! you should <laughs> yeah Woo! it's darth vader I'm just trying to imagine like the parallel here of like some mm -hmm. some like art house crowd. <laughs> they see yeah. like Juliette Binoche on screen. <laughs> like, woo! Yeah. <laughs> they see it shot on like 16 millimeter film and they're like, yes, cinema. <laughs> yeah, if I'm if I'm watching like Killing of a Sacred Deer, I don't want an audience like that. But no. if it's a dumb Marvel movie, then sure. Yeah. I mean I say dumb, but they're they're fun and they are what they are. Uh, yeah, um, I think honestly they deserve more credit. Um, yeah, I I, it's kind I of love underplayed the, uh, how, Listen, for what, what they, they are, they're amazing. Because uh, someone else, because people complain about this all the time, like oh they're ruining Hollywood by creating cinematic universes and yada yada yada. Eh. But if someone's gonna do it anyway, it might as well be good. And Marvel does it, I think, as good as you could possibly do it. They have owned. So it. I commend them. They've, they've owned it, it, and they've yeah. No one can do it as well as them. It's too late. No one. Exactly. They they have, have you struck seen with it. Tom Cruise's The Mummy? I think that's going to be pretty. <laughs> oh <fun>. God, <laughs> dude! They have Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. They're going to have like a vampire or the something. Mummy. Yeah. <laughs> a vampire. Yeah, they're going to have Dracula. They have something in there. The Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, it's going to be really good. I swear. Wait, just wait for the second yeah. movie. I don't know if you know. They all, that all got canceled. I know. <laughs> The, no, none of these none of these people have the material. The only ones no, who have, have the are material, Marvel and what DC. They don't have, they don't have is time. They're yeah. already twenty years behind. Yeah, 
<laughs> well, now they are, yeah. In terms Ugh. of the planning. So you can't mm-hmm. do it now. It's not interesting. Like, what was it? That King Kong movie, Kong. Kong Skull mm-hmm. Island, that was it. Oh, At the yeah. end of the credits, it was like, oh, look, we're teasing our cinematic universe. And it's like, fuck off. Like, oh, yeah. you've, been, you've yeah. been beaten to the punch. No one cares about this anymore. All we care mm-hmm. about is the Marvel one. And it's like, DC... If they wanted to catch up, all they'd have to do, in theory, is kind of copy what they did and not rush in the same way. Yeah. Get talent, as Marvel has done, and meticulously plan it out over a long period of time. Otherwise, it's just not satisfying. Yeah. What you said, Alex, about them, they're already behind, so they had to play a game of catch-up and do everything in three years, and that's where they fucked up. They thought well, it would yeah, work, and they, it didn't. They, just... they thought they could have a piece of the same pie, whereas what would have been the smart thing is to do is they have some of the most recognizable and valuable characters of all time they got fucking batman superman and wonder woman all they had to mm-hmm. do was make films based around those characters good fucking films that's all they yeah. had to do suicide squad yeah and instead we get suicide yeah. squad <laughs> them too oh boy i think if ant-man was in the movie they would have defeated thanos easily it's a shame he wasn't in it mm. that's true actually he's pretty handy that, that little yeah. boy instead he's off on his own adventure can't wait <laughs> can't wait to see that fun movie <laughs> Yeah. Can we uh, yeah. talk a little bit about spoilery things? And then we'll... Uh, okay. I guess yeah, we man. can... Okay. Uh, You've all seen it anyway at this point. I'm well, I mean, we'll audience. allow them to skip. So just put a different time stamp here when we start... <sighs> yeah. When we start the... Po- uh, okay. In case they want to skip. Why are you getting so Spoiler. upset? <laughs> like, no, no, no. I'm not getting upset. Uh, it's just like everyone's seen it. <laughs> so no, it's pointless. it's not true. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's seen it twice already. Whatever. You have to understand... The variety of human brains on the planet. The movie made six hundred million dollars already. It's been I one know, weekend. Jesus Christ. So, so uh, I think I was. spoilers. Thanos activates his power glove and um, kills fifty percent of the people in the universe. I'm guessing mm-hmm. this applies to animals and everything too. Yep. It's kind of the biggest worry for me. That whole aspect mm-hmm. of it. Oh, yeah. Because um, for any universe to have any consequence of any kind, death needs to mean something. Mm-hmm. And the problem is if they bring back, especially in my opinion, uh, Loki, Gamora, or Vision, um, then why should I ever care about anyone dying oh, yeah. or getting yeah. in danger? I, I feel um, the same exact way. I'll be laughing my ass off if they bring back Loki. I'll be so happy. It'll be really funny for me. <laughs> I'm, fine, <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with the Dust Boys coming back because um, mm-hmm. obviously they're coming back. They're not going to fucking kill Black Panther. Yeah, That film did of so course. well financially. And the same with Oops. Spider-Man. Um, mm-hmm. what, what's your guys' theory on what they're going to do to undo it, though? Um, Lo- well, the well, fucking one. Doctor Strange was like, hey, you got to trust me. I gave him the crystal because this is the only way we can win, and he can see the future. So it's like, okay, well, clearly there's some sort of fucking workaround where this had to have happened for everything to make sense, I guess, whereas not giving him the crystal that he was hiding wouldn't have worked out, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, So clearly everybody has to come back because he saw the future, I guess. He specifically yeah. saved Tony Stark, though, didn't he? So it's, it's probably yeah, Tony yeah. Stark has to, I don't know, sacrifice I, himself in yeah, some I'm form. I'm guessing to... Tony Stark is the important person in it. And Doctor Strange is like, I can't let him die. So let Thanos just fucking take it. Mm. Yeah. Let, let Thanos yeah. just take the gems and we'll figure it out later. Would you, so, would, how, what, what do you think about... Because if you notice, every character that's left that isn't dust or leaves or whatever, is mm-hmm. they're all kind of the original Avengers cast. Um, Which I loved. I that's, like that as well because it means I the like next one is is going to be like a proper double yeah. triple fan service moment. Mm-hmm. Um, of yeah, bringing them all back. back. To the, well, yeah, hopefully, it's, back it's the, the it's it's the the conclusion to those characters. Hopefully, before they kind mm-hmm. of pass the torch on their final swan song. Um, so hopefully, yeah. th- I don't know. They do something satisfying with that. It's just uh, if if they bring Gamora back, it just means like. Well, what was even the fucking point then? Mm. It's like th- it's yeah. the fear of these event stories. If everything's building to an event, then the events kind of mean nothing if they don't have any greater mm-hmm. impact on the rest of the universe. Mm-hmm. But then that also creates huge creative restrictions on the writers and directors because they can't do what they want with the characters. They've got to be like 
no, uh, we we need this character to be alive for the next event movie because we need them to bring in the butts to seats kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I never got the sense really? that they're going to bring Gamora or the Vision back at all. Really? Like, what about as, that as like, so much... Vision at the end where he's like talking to no, baby No, I don't Gamora. think so. And listen, I love Vision and Loki and Gamora, but they're not such major characters that they make me go like, oh, well, you have to bring him back. Like, if they killed off Spider-Man the same That's way, the thing. I'd go, okay. But, like, Gamora, uh, most people really don't care one way or the other about Gamora. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I like her. Same thing with Loki. Same thing with um, the Vision, you know? I just think for the story, it's it's necessary for her to remain dead. Um, yeah, I, I think It's kind of what the so whole too. film is built around. It's the, like, emotional core of the, the, the villain, the villain's whole plight. It's, like, such an important moment to him, and if that's entirely undercut then it makes the entire film worthless on any emotional level yeah that's the I green girl agree right with you. yeah <laughs> that's yeah. the green girl <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah it's a, it's a good movie it'd be funny if wanna, she got brought back wanna... were, were you surprised <laughs> yeah. ralph but by, by everyone dying at um the end? just by like like personally i i knew I was I was pre- I predicted to my friend that Loki was going to get choked to death in the first scene, <laughs> and I was right. For, not the first uh, scene I wasn't expecting, and I definitely wasn't expecting Gamora, which I was um, like, "Holy shit!" Gamora that scene was, was a little corny how they did it, but um, was the I saw this I whole the... universe is though. I love the corny shit about it. That's why I kind of okay. like it. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I just thought it was everything it needed to be. Yeah, with, it felt while that way being too. Surprising. Too, mm-hmm. which is, is just like we've seen so many of these fucking films and this, they're still managing to spin it in such a way where it's like I, I I thought the the whole villain aspect with Thanos was like I haven't seen a villain in a movie like this where I was actually like kind of tense and, and fearful of what, what you could do because he he's established immediately it was like it doesn't open like a normal Marvel movie it's somber the music is like kind of droning and low and yeah. every, it's immediately dark or you, you, it completely skips over all the destruction and it's mm-hmm. like just going through this like battlefield that is a, a battle that's already happened it's all implied and then yeah. you set up with this character who we're not quite sure of what he's capable of and then he kicks the shit out of uh, Hulk instantly and it's like shit okay so we know how powerful mm-hmm. he is and then throughout the movie they just take the time developing him and with each stone he gets he, he uses it in a creative way to like show um how, how much stronger he's getting, and, and by the end of it, now. you like really know him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. He was unstoppable, and he was just mean, and he was he was a crazy person. And I thought it was competing. fascinating there because and I he was fascinating villains. on top of it. You totally understood everything he wanted yeah. to do. And when his you motivation. completely understand their motivations, yeah. I kept comparing him to yeah. Steppenwolf. Well, yeah, I, Steppenwolf, or even or even Ultron, where it's like you have Ultron, yeah. and he's a jokey, sarcastic dickhead like everyone else he has to be seriously. because yeah. tony stark made him and it's like fucking stop with this i want it's a villain who I, that makes who I him effective hate. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so you're saying yeah. you completely understand why he wants to destroy half of the beings of the no you understand the his motivations yeah. from yeah. his, his reason for doing that it. Yeah. he wants to do it i guess yes <laughs> but yes, I still, that he wants to do it and why he wants to I do it i can't for the life of me understand why he wants to do it it's his logic. He's like, there's well, too many people. There's, there's people in the real world who have this logic too. There's too many people, and we need to kill a lot of them so that there's more resources for the yeah, rest of us. But this is like, and he could easily go. He could snap his universe. fingers and make more resources. Sure, it's Marvel. Don't worry about. It. Yeah, like what <laughs> I don't he, overthink he just, these he could, things. He could make more resources. I don't understand why. He of wants course to he kill could. Everybody. It's a plot what hole. I'm fuck? like, yeah, whatever. There's things like that. That's why I don't give these movies five out of fives because there's stuff like that where you're like, yeah, that that. But then you don't. The movie I, don't, I still don't work. really understand what these gems can do. They kind of skip over it a little One bit. One of them's um, for space. Yeah. Like, can can they do things like cure the universe? One of them's for reality. One of them's for time. What What are the other ones? There's those three. Um, and I was thinking, like, can't you destroy the universe with just three of them or four less, of them? What if you just have the reality one? Can't you just get rid of reality? Gluttony. I bet, that, I bet that'll fuck everything. Gluttony. No, I think those are the seven deadly sins, Adam. No, those are the seven <laughs> deadly stones. <laughs> the seven deadly stones. Uh, and I don't know for the life of me why these stones exist or who made them. Whatever. Yeah, they sure explain that bit. They just it. don't explain what they can do. Yeah, yeah. particularly. It, it's um, it. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, it doesn't bother um, me either. I think it's fine. Yeah. I like how Vision died twice. Yeah. Oh, that was sick. 
That I couldn't fuck it. That was the most brutal part of the movie where there's this whole sacrifice scene and then Thanos is like, nah, fuck you and brings it back to life and then kills him again. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. horrific. Yeah. That was really, yeah. That was pretty fucking tragic, I gotta say. If I was a kid, I'd be mortified watching that. Yeah. I just oh, think it was effective God. for what exactly yeah. what I was trying to do. It just achieved it. I, I don't know what mm-hmm. more or less you could want. I was actually very pleasantly surprised with the film overall. Even more pleasantly surprised that the end credit scene wasn't just a haha we're gonna bring a happy mood to it after all of that like yeah. i was totally yeah. expecting at the end credits like they're gonna you know things are gonna be fine and they're gonna have some stupid joke but it wasn't yeah and then i was even happier after that fact because i realized that for the next year all of these children and to some extent man children are going to be <laughs> very upset and blue balled for an entire year <laughs> and that's just very amusing to me what, why do you hate about... the audience for these for these movies? Adam? I just I think it's funny that people take it so seriously. That's that's my thing. <laughs> I, I agree with you because I I'm it's, able to just watch and enjoy it as like a popcorn it's just, thing. You know, people love stupid escapism like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it as like I love movies, right? And then there's some people who don't see as many movies as us, and they go to the theater just for Avengers movies or whatever, and they're very mm-hmm. passionate about these mm-hmm. movies they see because they're they're you know. How we feel about, I don't know, some fucking artsy-fartsy movies, how they feel about this. But I've I've tried to (laughs) to envision that kind of parallel, too, and I I can't think of any single thing that I take that seriously, you know? Like, I've I've built my whole life around movies and directors and artists that I love, but I can't think of any single thing where I would be, like, upset for an entire year, you know? Is uh, anyone genuinely upset there, or is it just like, no, no, no. I can't wait for the next one? I, I wasn't upset, because I know they're going to come back. Um, yeah. But, like, I, I've had media like that affect me for, like, I don't know. Like, the day after Game of Thrones, there's a big thing that happens in Game of Thrones that's very sad. And I, w- I was pretty upset for, like, two days or so. Yeah. So, I wouldn't... I was also 16, so maybe if I saw that now, I'd be like, <laughs> eh, who gives a shit? But, yeah, I think I think media could totally do that to you if you're that invested in it Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, people get an emotional investment into things they enjoy so yeah i wish i could get that emotionally invested (laughs) rip i can't get that emotionally invested in marvel movies but Mm. that's why i prefer the more fun ones to this like i like the first Mm. avengers better because it's just a comedy but i do like this for what it is again Mm. yeah i just think the the what they call the russo brothers Mm-hmm. They just know exactly what they're doing. They're just like the perfect people for the job. I think it's cool yeah. that they came from these little TV shows, comedies. Oh yeah, and they've, they've just mm-hmm. built their way up to doing the most successful film like of all time, potentially. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. They, they put little touches in there that like I thought it was effective when the spaceship thing comes down first, and they don't cut to like a wide shot of the city of it like warping in with like a Transformers movie it's all from the perspective of I can't remember Iron Man or Doctor Strange mm. and you don't see it until they see it just little details yeah. like that that really kind of engross you yeah. into mm-hmm. the, the moment no I like and there that there was like that tracking shot of Iron Man as he was going down the street and it's all one take and it's yeah, like yeah, just yeah. people falling That's the bit down I mean. yeah that was really effective there's yeah. stuff like that I really liked there's a lot of things I really like and then half of the time they're ruined by some shitty joke like are you intentionally moving your hair right now? I'm like, well, it's a, that's not yeah. funny. And also, it's you'd be able like to feel the wind too, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have some problems with it, but I mean, just overall, yeah, I think I the, the package was pretty solid. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I don't really find these movies very funny. But um, something about the humor just doesn't bug me. It, it might just bug you because I don't know if um, your audiences are just more annoying in terms of like they just scream laughing no, at the tiniest joke I don't, I don't even think it's that it's like i think it's a the, little bit the, of that the way these scenes <laughs> yeah the way these scenes are structured is very similar all the joking scenes where it starts and then a character comes in and there's a joke and there's a reaction and then they stop and talk yeah. about the plot for five seconds like everything's kind of structured the same and i get annoyed with it just at how all these scenes kind of play out the same when it's a jokey kind of comedic scene Mm -hmm. it's like ah all right and like when you watch all these marvel movies like i have you start to notice it so yeah i started noticing that when i saw guardians 2 where it was like you can kind of figure out the the way the humor is embedded into the overall story exactly it becomes predictable and then it's not funny anymore hence you know 
the complaints. Yeah. But besides that, I do think it's good. Yeah. Man. yeah. What would All you right. give it out of 10? You gave it a 6, uh, Ralph? Yeah, like a 3 out of 5, which is yeah. like a 6. I find it really difficult with this movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, like, I don't know what else it could even be for what it is, you know? Like, do mm-hmm. you... I haven't decided if I want to rate things more on a comparative scale. Like, um, you kind of t- try to objectively assess the kind of filmmaking aspects of it first and foremost whereas i prefer to kind of look at it at at what i perceive the intent and like context of the film to be and i think for its intent it's just exactly what it needs to be so i don't know i'd probably give it like an eight or a nine Mm -hmm. on that on 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 those lines yeah 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 Yeah. i i can't argue with you listen it's a it's like a groundbreaking piece of filmmaking there's i can't even think of anything else like this yeah, because there enough. There probably isn't. Eh. So, eh. <laughs> Adam, Adam doesn't like it when I say that. But yeah, dude, it's, I, it's the um, truth. You, yeah. What other movie can you name where where you take forty characters from other movies and try to make it work, and it does? Well, here's the thing, though. It's like there wasn't there wasn't really forty main characters. There there were characters that were just kind of forgotten about for most of the movie, and that's how it worked, right? So oh, yeah. they didn't really incorporate forty main stories. Because you knew or who anything. they were. Well, no, that's fine, but it's like they might as well not be main characters to the context of this film, right? It's only if you watch the other film that you can other films that you consider them main characters, right? So there have been Mm -hmm. other movies before that have had, you know, ten or less main characters to follow that had important things going on that have been long and are entertaining before. I mean, you know, I I wouldn't consider it to be like a perfect. The balance yeah. is so perfect. I was kind of amazed at how I, well they did it. It was well paced because the movie had to move along, right? Yeah, the pacing was like yeah. superb. I enjoyed the pacing for sure. I just it, mm-hmm. it didn't really d- if they if they did that with like forty actual main stories going on, then I would be really impressed. But they didn't. They just kind of considered some stories to be the main story and then brushed most of the other characters yeah. off to the side. I guess so. It's not, it's not Magnolia, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's an achievement, I'll say. Do you guys fear the impact it might have in terms of, we've already seen DC try to copy this level of, of yeah. success. Oh, Do you think so there's going to be like an impact that, with like now these big blockbusters ending on cliffhangers or something uh-huh. like that? That's, that's why, because I know when Marvel did it, see, they planned all this out and they knew this movie was going to end like this. Yeah, I, and then I it was going to make hundreds I don't of see it as like a pretentious, or not a pretentious, uh, like a cash grab studio decision to end the movie like this. I no, totally no. see it as an organic story thing. Yeah. 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 Other studios do it. Other studios will do it and go like, oh, we just kill everyone off at the end of the movie and we'll fucking, they'll go see the next one. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. When you have like two movies scheduled and you made it very clear that it's not the end of the, the story that you're watching, like I get, I get that they didn't, you know, literally call it part one in the title because that wouldn't sell as many tickets. But I mean, it's been clear to anybody paying attention that this is part one of two in the same way that you can end the Matrix Reloaded like that, you know. So I don't I mean, Mm -hmm. if another studio tries to copy this, I should hope that they would at least, you know, be honest with the audience beforehand and saying that it's a part one out of two. It would be particularly hilarious if if they wound up doing something like pretending it's one movie and then pulling that kind of an <laughs> yeah. end. Oh yeah. They're yeah, totally that would be really trick funny. people. I don't know what you think Hollywood is, but they'll yeah. totally trick people to get more tickets like that. That'd Justice be hilarious League, to me. Uh, Justice League, endless kerfuffle, and then they'll end it the same mm-hmm. way. That'd be really yeah, funny to me if Justice League did the exact same thing. Oh, they'll try. I still haven't seen anything but Suicide Squad <laughs> from the DCU. You're not uh, missing out on anything. That's a good. Yeah, you're not missing out on anything. Nothing. God, what a disaster. <laughs> Did I make the right choice? Right. Did I buy tickets to the right movie? Well, it depends. If you yeah. find like Ready Player One funny, you'll find something like Justice League 
I, <laughs> I think hilarious. I will thoroughly enjoy myself watching like Batman v Superman. I just haven't made the commitment yet. No, 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 not that so movie. Long. Yeah, that, that movie's that movie's boring. I think you'll enjoy Justice League because it's so, so, so short. Bad. They forced the studio okay. forced it, them to be short. Yeah, um, okay, it's cool. short and it's a mess and it costs three hundred million dollars and it doesn't look like it at all. I'll it check it out. So cheap. You've sold it's, me. It's amazing. Yeah, if you if you're interested. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'll definitely watch it. I should probably do that for like a commentary track or something. Just get my live reaction. Yeah. 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 You know what? That, I think idea. that'd be a good. We just need two hours of you laughing. It would just be a <laughs> genuine experience. Speaking of uh, genuine experiences, Ralph had a movie yeah. that we were going to talk Ooh. about. Oh, and yes. mm-hmm. I he do. recommended it the last podcast episode. And I'm assuming mm. we're all done talking about Avengers. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, if uh, anybody wants to join in on this discussion, uh, you're about to be spoiled for the film Barry Lyndon. So go watch it if you haven't already, uh, and we will be recommending a movie at the end of this podcast that you should watch uh, in preparation for next episode. Tell us about this film, Ralph. Mm. So Barry Lyndon is from 1975. It's a movie directed by Stanley Kubrick, my favorite director. Woo! Focuses on a hell woo! yeah baby. Woo! It focuses on a man in the 18th century, Redmond Barry. And we just follow his life from a young soldier to a man of stature and respect. And uh, yeah, it's just the story of his life. And that's it. That's all mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. And it's one of my favorite movies. So do we want to talk about Kubrick a bit? Sure. Because he's a very... Okay. There's a lot to talk about with him. He faked the moon landing. Mm. He, uh, <laughs> he, what, he uh, exposed the Illuminati and they killed him for it. There's a lot of stuff like that to talk about. He destroyed the brain of Shelley Duvall. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> I'm making a Full Metal Jacket video right now, and I wanted to go back to all the clips of him torturing Shelley Duvall on set, and they're really <laughs> funny. If he did that in current year, he would have a Me Too. Oh, yeah, totally. But like back then, no one gave a shit. Oh, Shelley yeah. Duvall's pulling out her hair from stress, and Stanley Kubrick takes like a strand of her hair and goes, oh, yeah, you're stressed? Okay. Get back on set, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He was notoriously oh, difficult, it. wasn't he? Yeah, he was very difficult, but he did it for a reason. I mean, yeah, yeah, he yeah. wanted to you get can, people shows. in that mindset. Yeah, he did it in every... Well, in movies where it fit, like Full Metal Jacket, he did it too. There uh, are some directors... He wanted his perfect movie. ...that thrived in certain points in time because it was acceptable to torture actors, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I feel like You're it's okay right, yeah. to torture actors because actors want to be part of something amazing too. Uh, it has to be consensual. It requires the director being like that. Well, then, I don't know. And it, it's not like anyone looks back on their experience with Kubrick and like, oh, yeah, it was terrible. They go, yeah, it was terrible, but I made a masterpiece and I made yeah, a exactly. masterpiece. Mm. So I don't care. No, 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 no. I, I, I hear you and I, I mm-hmm. value art, obviously, in an incredible amount yeah. and I wouldn't trade the uh, final product of those films for, I guess, the actor's sanity. But I still think yeah. that there should... I, I mean, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't go past someone's own consent in the issue. Going past their comfort is one thing. You know, there were tons of yeah, actors and, and people on set for The Revenant that made tons of bitchy complaints about how, like, oh, you should have just green screened it. I didn't want to be in the cold, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you sign on to this project. You're consenting to this project. Do your fucking job. We're going to do it this way. You're going to be uncomfortable, but, you know, it's going to show in the performances, you know? But you, mm-hmm. you should still mm-hmm. be able to sign on to that discomfort. If you want to participate yeah. in method acting to make yourself being more miserable over the course of a film, you should still consent to that. It shouldn't be somebody fucking with you the entire time you know sure i guess that's fair but i guess i guess as long as they know what getting into yeah but kubrick's reputation is that they they know kubrick does 60 takes of everything Mm -hmm. so they should be prepared (laughs) Mm. Uh, yeah um do we all do we all like kubrick i love kubrick okay yeah oh good oh probably one of the most influential filmmakers of all time Um, of course totally the way he's managed to attack so many different genres and 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 kind of perfect them almost and make the most influential mm-hmm. memorable 
like film of that kind, whether it be The Shining for horror or 2001 for science fiction. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's kind really of incredible. Because like other directors devote their whole career to doing one genre, like I, Ridley yeah. Scott doing sci-fi or or. Uh, or Wes Anderson, know, other, as you were saying the other week. Oh, Wes Anderson, yeah, doing his own thing, and then Wes, no, not what was it? Wes Craven doing horror. Yeah. yeah. And then Kubrick comes in and just makes one movie in that genre. It's like one of the best. He's ones. like a chameleon. Sometimes it's the best one. Yeah, he's a chameleon. It just yeah. goes to show, like, if you know what you're doing, you can do anything. Mm. Yeah. So, I, I'm I'm the guy who says I think Kubrick's the only guy who makes movies, and everyone else is like an imitation of him. <laughs> that's how good I think he is. <laughs> of course, that's an exaggeration, but like, I really do think every single one of his movies is almost perfect, if not perfect. Hmm. Yeah, boy. Hmm. <laughs> where, where to even begin with a film like this like it's quite expansive be it That's running time and also it's, detail it's three hours long but so much happens that i don't mind the, i don't mind the runtime mm -hmm. i actually think the pacing is pretty brisk considering mm -hmm. you go from a it's very fast guy's entire life yeah yeah and yes. there's characters really that just funny. show up and leave but you feel like you still know everything about the character that yeah. there is to know like they're so uh, well defined and you feel like you've you known them feel, forever yeah. like they're so memorable that guy he knew, he, who he played cards with for like yeah. that period of his life, like that was such a great character, and then he disappears, and you never mm -hmm. know what happened to him, but you love him. Yeah, even even that character that he winds up meeting, and he he's like, "I'm your best friend," and then we see him die on the battlefield. We still feel the emotional weight, even though we didn't really see too much as to yeah. how their friendship developed we were kind of just told this is how it is and in any other movie you would almost think that that would just be a terrible idea to to say something rather than show it but because of how every every scene with them was performed and how they interacted it was still so believable and the pacing was yeah. consistent throughout the entire movie in terms of like here's a character here's what they meant to the main character and here's what happens to them sort of thing it never felt inorganic mm -hmm. it always yeah, felt very yeah. genuine yeah, it was crazy. It's an amazing feat to pull off. And there's a lot of themes going on in this movie, too. It's another movie about fatherhood, which is like, this is the fifth movie we've talked about that has themes mm -hmm. of fatherhood in it, oh, yeah. where he's missing his father, and then he, he keeps finding new father figures in his life. Uh, there's, like, destiny. Uh, but I think it's mostly a movie about reputation and how, like, when you're dead, you try to leave something behind of yourself and try to make your life mean something. Mm-hmm. And then mm -hmm. it's just your life kind of fizzles out and everything you love kind of dies and then you <laughs> die and that's it. So it's a it's a pretty dark fucking message, but it still manages to be entertaining and funny. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's just <laughs> packed full of so many great scenes. Like yes. you think of one, you think, yeah, that's my favorite scene. Oh, wait, hang on. There was that other scene with the, the ribbon in the tits or, or hang on. No, what about the other scene where he's like held up and the with the the horses and it's like god there's just so much going on in this film and it, it does feel it feels its length and it doesn't in terms of like so much happens there's it is like watching someone's entire life but it, it you're right the pacing is is perfect for it. it it doesn't drag as much as it is just long it's just this meaty yeah. story it's, of this guy exactly it's just a big meal and when you're done with it you're exhausted yeah you're like man mm. that was that was that was nurturing that was absolutely beautiful. worth it, yeah. And I'm going to yeah, be thinking about that for a while, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, homoerotic undertones in it that are played off for comedy. Did you guys <laughs> notice that? It's like he's making well, he's, fun of how he gay stole the, horse the yes, culture from was. From the gay yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, these are just, they were the guys kissing in the pool when Barry stole their jacket. He kissed his uh, father figure on the lips when he died. Yeah. I think he yeah. was just making fun of how, like, artificial and mannered their whole society was. Yeah, and like, like even when they fought, they would like gather in a circle, and it was very mannered and and polite. It was mm -hmm. just hilarious to me. All the rich men wear lipstick. Yeah, and makeup. And uh, it it didn't sacrifice its integrity for humor, though. It's it still seemed meticulous and accurate to the mm -hmm. time period, though. Um, yeah, it was. It wasn't like a Marvel movie where it grinds to the halt, where it's like now time for a joke. It's just like these yeah. characters interacting is funny. They're not telling jokes. It's just mm. funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's he not interrupt the plot them. for some jokes, which yeah, seem yeah. to happen a lot in Avengers. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. Something that could totally throw this movie off track is the narration. 
But it doesn't. I was thinking that. It doesn't. We have like this nameless narrator who's reading us facts about Barry's life, and that's all he mm-hmm. does. And that could easily just make us go like, oh, so you're just explaining the plot. But it's almost like since this is a period piece, mm-hmm. it's like this is this is all we know about Barry Lyndon from, I guess, I know it's not a real person. It's based on a book that's kind of based on a real person. Yeah. So it's kind of pretending like this is all we know about Barry mm-hmm. Lyndon is his actions. And again, it, it fits into that theme of reputation where it's like this is all that's left of the history of this man. And that just makes it so much more tragic <laughs> to me. Yeah. It's like it's like an impression of a human being we're seeing. It's not even yeah. a, a human being. It's like a painting. Again, going back to another thing Kubrick did where he made every shot in this movie look like a painting. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it really does. Yeah. The way people the were posed, too. Like even oh, just sitting God. down when um, his uh, stepson, what's his name? Bully it? Bull, bully it? Bull, oh bull, god, what's his name? Bor- Lord right Bullingdon, Bullingdon or something. Yeah. Bullington, yes. Bullington. That's it. Um, when he mm-hmm. like wakes him up on the chair or whatever, and all those other guys are like sleeping on their own chairs, and they're all like perfectly posed, and it oh, does yeah. look genuinely look like a painting. It looks like they're just plucked. Yeah. Out of a. There's a so painting. many amazing shots in this. I think this is like the most gorgeous movie ever made. It's. It's also yeah. all natural light. Oh yeah. I believe mm-hmm. this is one of the first movies to do that. Yeah. We got NASA lenses. Because <laughs> it was so really? dark, certain some of these scenes. Yeah, well, the scenes inside with the candlelight. Yeah, yeah. They're all lit with candlelight, and he had to get lenses from NASA. Cause it when was they so do the toast in inside, like all the lighting's just mm-hmm. coming from the windows, and sometimes the candles. Yeah. It's insane. It you is, never see that kind of thing from beautiful. 1975, especially. Like yeah, holy mm-hmm. crap! The zooms. Oh the yeah. The zooms in this movie are all perfectly balanced where like he he would zoom out and then something would come into the frame on the yeah. left mm-hmm. just to balance out the image a bit. It would, I, I like I can't believe how good he is at making movies. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Yeah, I love the um the shot where um it's it's kind of like panning and then through this small hole in the trees it zooms in and shows him kissing the maid. Oh yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great so shot. Shots like that. When yeah. he's like on the boat with it with his dog and his son fishing, yeah. and they zoom out, and then there's like a swan to the top left. It's like how the fuck he had to get a swan and just <laughs> put it there. Like who thinks of this shit? It's amazing. There's so many perfect shots in this movie, and even even something as simple as like when the little boy is playing uh, croquette or croquet or whatever, and um, the dog's like rolling around, and by the time the shots zoomed out, the dog stopped. And I'm just thinking like. Did you get the dog to roll around every time? Or did, was this just one of those, did. like, you know, you film enough and eventually something cool happens or something? Like, there's so much of it that's just, uh, like, too perfect that you start to question how much of a movie it is almost. Yeah. It's, um, the thing is, too, Kubrick always made models before he shot and he used, like, cardboard cutouts just mm-hmm. to get the lighting right, which is why everything looks so perfect because he planned oh, everything that's really cool. beforehand. That's what I was about to yeah. ask about, because um, it yeah, seems it a... comes across as meticulous, like in every aspect, and it's like how yeah. much planning was put into this. I mean, that's why, because he, yeah. he plans out very thoroughly. I have a book yeah. on him, and I so that's how I know all this. There is a shot in this movie where, Red, I think he's holding a handkerchief and he's arching his arm in a certain way. Barry Lyndon is, mm-hmm. and then right behind him is a tree. And the tree is arched the exact same way as his arm. Mm. And I'm like, how did you even fucking find that tree to <laughs> yeah. get that shot? God. <laughs> Stuff like that is amazing to mm. me. I would love to have seen the location scouting for this film. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, all of the too. expository shots, especially, are just really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Seeing as a lot of it is set in England, it, it, it was very reminiscent of things I've seen. Um, for uh, At first, I was like... Hang on a minute, Ralph. I thought you said was a, this was a period piece. This is what it looks like in England. Um, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone's still the extreme. There are like roads now and stuff, and we have vehicles. Yeah, th- there's a lot of... The, I live in an area that's kind of got yeah. <laughs> visuals like, like this, mm-hmm. so it was nice to see, including with all the kind of ancient castles and, and that kind of shit. Mm. The castles were amazing and gorgeous. What is impressive, though, is he, it didn't just look like a castle that has been there for hundreds of years. It looked like, yep, that's where these people live. That's being mm-hmm. used currently. You never for a, a second question that it was a set. It just seemed very real and genuine. There's so much to talk about, which is why we're all just like, because uh, 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 we're just yeah. baffled by like mm-hmm. how yeah. much there is in it. 
people see Kubrick as a guy who's very like cold and distant with his movies. They're all mm-hmm. very like artificial feeling and like I said, cold and distant. But this is, I think it's Kubrick's most intimate and personal movie. Definitely. And again, it has that same distance to it in a way with the narration and with the fact that it's a, you know, a story told to us from an omniscient narrator. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. still totally was emotionally on board for everything. And I think this is one of the saddest movies I've ever seen. When uh, when his son dies, I cried the first time I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> it's his so performance well is done. very good. Yeah. yeah, everyone's performance is really good, yeah, especially yeah. the kid who could easily suck, but he... he Mm-hmm. He was pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, just the music and the, the cut he made when uh, Barry starts crying and then we cut to the coffin and it's yeah. slowly the music. Out. Bah, bah, like it, at yeah. the peak of the of the score, exactly when the shot happens. Bah, mm-hmm. bah, bah. His use of music too is great because he doesn't, he gets obviously classical music that's been composed already, but it yeah. makes all of his movies feel timeless. Mm where you could just watch mm-hmm. him at any point in the future and it would just feel right, you know? And mm-hmm. he would repeat certain themes in the movie a lot, like the mm-hmm. that's, that same song he repeats during all the duel scenes. A million times that yeah. song is in that movie. Yeah. It's a great but he song. he uses it to... Oh, it is. But he yeah. uses it to, sh- again, highlight the repetition in Barry's life and how certain things just kind of happen and are doomed to happen over and over mm. in life. Yeah. yeah. So I love that, too. It's like poetry. Yeah. <laughs> I like how they kind of changed up the score by reprising it with those. I think they're called like timpani drums or something. Just during some of the yeah. dueling scenes, it was like, bum, 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 bum. You know, doing the yeah. exact yeah. same thing yeah, yeah. with different instrumentation, I guess, using different instruments. This actually won an Oscar for the music best it did? music how does that work if it's already been exactly this is what i'm i'm trying to figure out because i'm i'm mm, looking at i'm looking at it right. right no it is right i'm looking at it right now because they yeah, actually used to have different categories for music one the category that this was for was best music scoring original score and or adaptation so oh, it's okay. the adaptations okay. were once acceptable it seems in the oscars whereas the category mm. for best music original dramatic score actually went to jaws for the same year so okay. hmm. it seems as though they used to accept adapted scores, which makes me a little upset that they still don't, because I really think that Clint Mansell totally deserved it for Black Swan, but he was ineligible for that because it was uh, based oh, right. off of it was previous, yeah, previous music. But the thing is, all of music is adapted from classical music. <laughs> like Star Wars <laughs> is literally the planets from Holst. I think that's mm-hmm. the guy who. Uh, like they, they're all inspired. What by you want? Yeah, music. inspired is different than adapted, yeah. though. That's what I, I was gonna get at. I mean, when you get when you look at Star Wars, it's uh, it's very similar. But I love Star Wars. That's the thing. I love mm-hmm. the score, so it doesn't mm-hmm. take away from my enjoyment of it. Mm-hmm. Going back to the detachment thing, where you said it can feel kind of cold in some of the movies, especially like. 2001 or something like that but um Mm -hmm. it it really works to make a kind of genuine and honest impression of how humans just are when they're not being watched or not playing up to a camera camera (laughs) because this guy he's kind of a massive scumbag he He is in ways yeah for sure he's lying he's cheating he's like pompous he's kind of a massive asshole and that makes Mm -hmm. it all the more (laughs) kind of truthful and and engaging I think that a lot of people probably were in that time period, especially, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, just... it's something that you could get away with more easily. That's for sure. It was more socially acceptable to consider your wife as like property and blow smoke in her face and be like, ha, ah, suck it, bitch. You know, yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that was just a part of the time in some aspects. And perhaps yeah. maybe this is just our biased interpretation of those times. But, you know, it's, it still seems genuine in some sense. Oh yeah, but even by those standards, he he beat his fucking son in front of an entire room of people. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a point where you go, eh. but there are likable things about him too. Yeah, he's not. Com- he he's just seems real. He just seems like a real mm-hmm. flawed person. Yeah. Um, yeah, who likes to lie a lot. Mm-hmm. He didn't exist just to be an asshole. Like he was still yeah. a yeah. character. He grew. Yeah, I mean, you see him grow like. Compare that first duel scene where he's like that ambitious young man, you know, I want to save my love, to the last scene 
where his son basically takes on that position, trying to protect his mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Barry actually shows some restraint and is, like, mature and decides not to shoot his son, even mm -hmm. though he easily could. Like, that just shows how much of a... a he's grown as a character. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's not entirely unlikable. He does have transformations like that, and he does learn things. He just ends up paying for whenever he does something good. <laughs> because after that, he lost his fucking leg. <laughs> it is a very important scene to the movie and i love how the duels are reincorporated in that sense i love mm -hmm. how the very first shot of the movie is a duel and it plays yeah. into I, yeah. I think they explained at the beginning that his father died in a duel and that was what they yeah. were showing yeah that is it. so i love how it's kind of like this sense of inescapable fate almost that the yeah. movie is imposing onto the characters in this world it's poetic mm -hmm. i think that like poetry that, so that, they that were... last duel <laughs> is probably my favorite scene in the movie um oh yeah directed so by tense. john woo yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah with all the fucking birds even <laughs> yeah, that pigeons. just like he, they'd shoot and then you hear the flapping of the wings like every element even the sound design like in those elements uh, those i think scenes, yeah i was so reading good. the trivia and I, I think it was something like it took them 40 days just to edit that one scene alone wow. or something like that yeah it's like that's the kind wow. of meticulous level we're on with it he's a nut job but i mean you got to be a little nuts to make movies like this yeah <laughs> movies this perfect are there yeah. any complaints with it because beside the fact that barry kind of looks the same age the whole movie which i can look yeah past, i noticed it at um, the beginning it was like because they kept yeah. calling him like but a boy and it was yeah, like but he looks like he's sturdy. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, again, it ties yeah. into the theme where I can forgive it because it's it's again it's that impression of a human being thing where basically yeah, there's probably one me. portrait of Barry Lyndon and this is what it looks like and so this is the one image of Barry Lyndon we have so it's yeah. this one character he looks the same his whole life. I get I still it, bought it and I can I, yeah I bought it. Didn't it. I, yeah, I, didn't I just it. thought about it didn't it. bother me at all. I'm just saying that's the only thing I could say is wrong with it. You know they changed up the hairstyles sometimes to make certain characters look younger or older. You know mm -hmm. Bullingdon looked older in the last parts yeah. of the movie just because of how his hair yeah. was. Um, I'm not sure mm -hmm. what they did makeup wise um or if they did much at all or maybe it was just really subtle yeah but i never i never found myself getting like distracted as of like oh yeah he's not old enough or he's too old sort of thing um yeah no. i usually find it more distracting if they add old age makeup to actors so i'm glad they didn't go that route yeah or depending did, on the movie very subtle yeah depending on the movie yeah synecdoche new york it worked very well oh yeah well that's i mean that's master class makeup so oh yeah that's great yeah. makeup no oscars mm -hmm. though no, Suicide Squad it? got makeup. <laughs> <laughs> it's the movie that keeps right. coming back. It's always going to be relevant. Yeah, it's it's, it's timeless. Tied in every movie. Mm -hmm. It's like poetry. Yeah, yeah it's like poetry. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> I guess the only thing I'm like desperately trying to think of anything you could even uh, call a negative, but for some people, I do think the three hour running time in and of itself will be a put off fuck them and uh, it, it's well, a daunting it, sound, task it sounds sure. like the most boring thing in the world on paper a period it piece does that is three hours long it is the least boring period piece movie i've that's ever the, seen that's for sure that's the thing um to anyone out there who's like trepidatious um about just those facts by themselves at least give it a chance because I, I found that as it went along the more brilliant it became um with each scene, you just get more and more invested and you gradually kind of figure out what the film is building towards and doing. Mm -hmm. And they, they do this really cool thing where they're, you think a scene is happening for a certain reason, but then it's revealed that, that that's actually not the, the case at all. Like mm -hmm. it being the girl at the beginning being his cousin or the duel was like set up and it's like you, you have no reason to expect these things and it still goes down these twists and turns that constantly keep it engaging yeah i mean it is a good period piece but it goes beyond that and it's just a great movie about life and reputation and destiny and all those other things that he just happens to explore in this time period i guess because it fit that style he wanted to go for where it looked like a painting yeah so there's a lot of reasons for it yeah and it's just a brilliant movie even the way he would subvert expectations by 
just just the time period it was set in where that robbery scene in any other movie would be lame like oh, yeah. get on the floor or whatever but they, mm-hmm. they just come in and like excuse me sir i'm afraid i'm gonna have to take your horse <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's just fucking hilarious because the robbers are you so put polite your arm down about it. no <laughs> yeah you can put your arms down now i'm sorry but in this line of work we must be able to travel faster than our clients <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. It's that shit's hilarious. To that was me. awesome. Yeah, that was a great scene. Is that still what it's like there, Alex? Yeah, yeah. I was I was actually mugged the other week, and it was pretty much picture, scene for scene, exactly like that. It was. They took your horse. Embarrassing. Yeah, they did. Yeah, it was called Barry. <laughs> actually, my horse. Ah. Uh, I really like how tall a lot of the uh, like forest kind of scenes were. The characters are like walking down the path, and it gives you a lot of room above their heads to see this like beautiful painting of trees essentially i really like yeah. that everything was very well acted the uh lady linden did an amazing job she kind of reminded me a bit of shelly duvall at points near the yeah. end of the film i don't know mm-hmm. if she just looks similar in her face when she cries or something maybe that's something <laughs> stanley kubrick has a good eye for <laughs> I, I want a woman who can cry um <laughs> i want a woman who looks miserable i'm guessing because he probably tortured her on yeah probably too. tortured her too <laughs> The the guy who played Bullington was really good too. Everybody Again, was great. That could have been, yeah, he was a great but character. That could have yeah. been a really one dimensional, unlikable character, and he managed mm-hmm. to like you. You get where he's coming from because Barry's a dickhead, and you like if yeah. you were at Bullington, you'd do the same thing. Yeah, you're with totally that kid. Do the yeah. same shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then at the end duel scene, you see that he's still a kid, and he looks like horrified when he takes that pistol. So mm. there's a lot of subtle stuff like that that I thought was great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's an amazing. Fantastic movie, best movie I've seen in a long time in terms of new movies I've seen, I guess. It's not a new movie, mm-hmm. but movies that I've seen for the first time. Yeah. It's yeah. Easily best I've seen in a long, long while. And I love Kubrick. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to check out even more of his films. I haven't seen The Killing yet. I really love Passive Glory. That's a really good one. But yeah, this might be my favorite Kubrick movie. This and yeah, I was about to ask. And, it's and up there. Jacket. Yeah, like uh, it's a tie between those three. It's basically what mood I'm in. Yeah, Clockwork Orange is amazing. I would have to yeah, say I, I like amazing. Clockwork Orange and The Shining in 2001 better than um, Full Metal Jacket. As much as I love Full Metal Jacket, I think that's a little tiny bit down from the other ones for me. Okay, I get it. It's a, it's an acquired taste thing. It's a lot going on. I don't know. If... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. It's an acquired taste thing. The, the Shining's one of the weaker ones, I think, for me. And it's still really? amazing. Yeah. You know, it's only a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, you know, it's that's, really that's funny. That's the level you speak at. I, forgot to, I yeah. forgot to mention this, but I guess it's kind of relevant still. After I watched uh, Ready Player One, the first thing I did was I watched uh, Stephen King's The Shining. <laughs> Because I realized uh, I hadn't seen it. And so I watched the fucking three hour mini series and it was so bad. Yeah, uh, really? I laughed at it with my I friends. Didn't know that that oh man. It's so I've funny. I've heard of it. I'd never had any interest. Well, because yeah. the, the Kubrick Shining is nothing like the book. And yeah, there's even that. a point in The Shining where there's a car on the side of the road that got mm-hmm. like in a car crash and it's the car from the book that they drove. And that was Kubrick's way of saying fuck you to Stephen King. And I didn't care about his stupid book. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. That's why I put that in there, which I think is brilliant. And so then in the 1990s, Stephen King is like, well, finally, I'm going to get somebody to make the, the movie exactly like the book. And so it was a yeah. miniseries because it's like three hours long or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the three hour long episodes. And it's exactly what you would imagine out of like a cheesy 90s shitty horror miniseries. You know, yeah. it's exactly what mm-hmm. you would imagine of just like boring, just... dull, shitty effects, terrible acting. Oh, my God. All bad. It is it is a disaster. All of Stephen King's miniseries stuff is yeah. just bad. And it's funny that he's like, this is the good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Stephen. <laughs> Maybe stick to just writing books. Mm. So what would we rate Barry Lyndon? I think it's about as perfect as, as a film can get. So I would I would give it top marks. Mm. It gets more interesting the more you think about it. There isn't anything I didn't like. And you can just tell that everything has been thought out and planned to the point where you're just watching this guy's vision perfectly unfold. And it's incredibly interesting and very thought provoking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five out of five for me. Mm-hmm. Perfect movie. Ten out of ten. I saw it twice. 
Oh, you saw it twice. Really? Yeah, I did it twice. Nice. I liked it six hours to... on Barry Lyndon. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good investment. I enjoyed that's it. Crazy. A lot, that's, so. that's like half a day. <laughs> a half yeah, a day, man. you know, being awake and active. You spend sitting watching. I didn't watch it twice in a row. I watched it like a week later. We had more time between episodes. Yeah, there was time, a chunk so. between this. Uh, why not? Why not just sit down and watch it twice in a row? I've heard of people doing that with movies before. I've never done that. Yeah, I wish they made movies like this where you could just sit in a theater for three hours and just absorb yourself in it. With an intermission. Yeah. With an intermission. Oh, yeah, it did have one, didn't That's it? the thing. You can take a break in the middle of the movie. Like, it's actually better because yeah. chapter one is mostly lighthearted and then chapter two is really dark. Yeah. Which yeah. is, it's just perfect. I wouldn't say me. it's better, but I prefer watching I it as a whole It still works. Yeah. It doesn't, it like, still works. ruin it. Yeah. Because, again, it, when you say three hour long period piece, it's, like, daunting. But if you watch it in hour and a half chunks, it's fine. It's like an episode of TV. Yeah. yeah. My roommate actually did that. He uh, he had to go to bed when the intermission happened the first time I watched it. And then the second time I watched it, I'm like, we're at the intermission again. And then he finished it. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. All right. It's a perfect movie. 10 Good out of 10. Kubrick. Perfect ratings yeah, from you... uh, all of us. The uh, Sardonicast first. Thanks, yeah. Kubrick. Daddy Kubrick. I think we had... Um, somebody's been making these... Uh, like polls on our subreddit of like favorite movies and directors. I think Stanley Kubrick oh. got number one on both the Sardonicast subreddit and my subreddit. Really? I think, I think he, so too. I think he at least got number one on mine. I'm, I'm pretty sure he did on the Sardonicast as well. So mm -hmm. I nice. checked that. I think it was Kubrick. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad choice. No, not a bad not choice a bad at all. Not a bad choice at all. Yeah. It's a, it's a very good choice. I dare say the only correct choice. Mine personally uh, would be Josh Trank. <laughs> <laughs> Holy I shit. thought you were going to give a real answer. No. Yeah. Man, that, that <laughs> fan four stick movie is so good. <laughs> I don't blame you. And then what else did he make? Chronicle? A found footage movie. Yeah, those are yeah. really hard. <sighs> the biggest twist Although in like all Chronicle. of uh, cinematic movie history is that somebody's given him money to make another movie. He's got something else in <laughs> development. Somebody's given Wait, really? him money. I never expected that. Yeah. Listen, He's making a movie Fantastic with Tom Four Hardy. Was disaster. I thought Tom his career Hardy. was yeah. over thanks to that Twitter stuff. You'd think. Yeah. Listen, Fantastic Four is a disaster, and I partly blame him, but it's also, there's a lot of other studio interference that made it as bad as it was. Chronicles yeah, no true. Yeah, true. But yeah. we'll see. I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. I'll give him a second right. chance. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So we got some questions. Uh, yes, we do. A Alex has some. Yeah, man. Do you want to start with yours, Alex? Because it's yeah, okay. me picking them out. Yeah. So if you want to leave your questions that we might answer on the show, head over to the Sardonicast Reddit, and Ralph normally puts a thread up when a new episode yeah. goes up. Um, I'm going to start with a subject I wanted to talk with you guys about from user J. This is fucking obnoxious. J6E6S6. <laughs> Do you hmm. think it's important to disregard an actor's scandals when it comes to judging the quality of a movie? Um, well, I, my first instinct is to say yes, because I can't think of a single time when I've had the quality of the film affected by some scandal of an actor. I can't think of a single time. Let me, um, let me add a detail. Um, sure. Let's say Kevin Spacey, take him as a, yeah. because I, I, I love Kevin Spacey's films that he's been in. Um, I obviously don't yeah. like what he's done. Um, and I even watched seven again recently which he is in and I, I couldn't help but continuously think about it and i don't know if that's kind of ruined some of the films he's in because i also yeah. really really liked um american beauty as well and he's the main character in that one i don't know if if re-watching that there'll be different thoughts about it or what and i remember i went into the pianist and of course the director has done some questionable shit and i just couldn't get it out of my head so i couldn't i couldn't be objective about the movie i couldn't think about it fairly very and, interesting and because of that like i was just i i just feel wrong watching this I, I don't i don't know if that's just a me thing or what but no, no i think a lot of people feel that way too but i'm not yeah, one of them i just take it on a case by case i suppose because i still like enjoyed seven you know i still yeah. like all the things that he's been in because i i think i just find it when it's the director you know the 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 all-seeing powerful force on a movie like the cr director gets either all the credit or all the blame um, mm -hmm. So when it's related to them, as opposed to an actor who is just doing a job that they're being paid for uh, alongside an entire cast and crew and writers and all that, I, I don't know. How do you guys feel? Well, I mean, yeah. I would take it the same way as if 
you know, let's say Kevin Spacey was completely responsible for something. Let's say let's say he made a tweet that said the Holocaust was bad. You know, just because he did some shitty things doesn't mean that you can look at that tweet and be like, I don't know if I agree with that. You know, in the same way that I would say any film or any work of art that comes from a person, you can still appreciate the art that they created, even if they're a terrible person. You know, I don't think it's endorsing yeah, the their actions or ideas just to say, hey, Roman Polanski was very incredibly talented. Kevin Spacey was incredibly talented. If they mm -hmm. weren't, they wouldn't be, you know, these icons in the first place. They can still be shitty people and you can even make a commitment saying like, OK, I'm just not going to buy one of their films or something like that. And I do find it a little unfortunate that, you know, great works of art can be unintentionally lesser appreciated because of something like that yeah. because when it comes down to it you know the founding fathers were all slave owner rapists you know but you know they made mm -hmm. america you know there's <laughs> yeah well there's so that's there's a double a whammy different... back back then that used to be acceptable <laughs> by society standards so but uh, like that didn't make the, the, it the, okay I, guess, <laughs> I listen that's what i'm not gonna judge People, well, if you did that now, obviously, obviously it's horrific. But like Christopher Columbus is obviously a fucking horrible person. But by uh, 200, 300 years ago standards, yeah, everyone did that shit. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ralph. It doesn't bother you, um, Ralph. Is the way to go, Ralph. It does. It does. No, it does bother me a lot. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, it does to answer your question. Like, especially American Beauty. Like, yeah. That's one. There's a scene where he fantasizes about an underage person. That makes mm -hmm. it better. <laughs> what, what about Baby Driver where he says something about the balls on that kid? <laughs> yeah, oh, the balls on that little I kid. I mean, it opens it up to a lot of jokes yeah. for sure. It makes certain things funnier, but it doesn't... At no point do I ever feel like like I'm unable to appreciate something that I love about their performance or about their directing no. because of it. Yeah. So, Not, and that's it what it comes down to for me. It doesn't the appreciation of it as art, but it, it's distracting for sure. I don't find myself that distracted. It's a case by case basis. I mean, it depends on how good the actor is too, you mm -hmm. know. Because if the guy, if it's just the guy who plays himself every movie, like let's say The Rock uh, killed a bunch of kids, <laughs> like The Rock plays himself in every movie, so I would mm. be no more annoyed at it than if uh, Daniel Day Lewis did it. Because yeah. when Daniel Day Lewis plays a character, I see the character. I don't see him. All right. So I, it's, it's well, a, The Rock was never like an amazingly talented actor, right? <laughs> yeah, ex I, that's what I'm saying. So it's like what uh, what would be appreciated if he didn't kill a bunch yeah. of kids is the question. <laughs> rampage. <laughs> God, rampage is ruined for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I I'm unable to appreciate the subtleties in in Dwayne Johnson's performance now. Yeah. So if instead right, of the Rock, so. it was Chris Benoit. Mm -hmm. I do have one kind of uh, example that I can point to, where okay. I find myself. I don't know. Like, I, I, I never really seem to fall in line with the whole, like, they shouldn't be able to make art or their career should be ruined thing. Of course, you know, if jail time is a thing, then they should serve jail time. And then, you know, once they get out of jail, continue making art or whatever. Yeah. That, yeah. you know, you shouldn't avoid the law if uh, you've done something terrible. There's one example of a person that I, I just wish wouldn't have a career right now. And that's uh, Chris Brown. And I'm, I'm just yeah, shocked... I mean that this whole hashtag me too thing happened and was huge and he's still collaborating with major artists and nobody is taking any real issue towards it that's the one that yeah. i'm the most shocked about it's fucking chris brown he, it's very inconsistent he just, he just ignored it yeah he did it at it the right point in time if you're going to mm -hmm. beat somebody up <laughs> to a fucking pulp it was better to do yeah. it 10 years ago than now i guess all well, right it's like, yeah. Because Kevin Spacey was was one of the first major ones in this new resurgence of this, he kind of got the 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 blunt end of the stick. Mm -hmm. And people like T.J. Miller, um, who's had some allegations against him, um, he's you know who's still in Ready Player One. They didn't CG him out. He's he's in Deadpool two. You know it doesn't hasn't seemed to really affect him um, when you could argue that the same treatment sh should or should not be necessary. Like they really went full on with Kevin, didn't they? Like they. Yeah. Full on just removed his performance from a movie. <laughs> well, yeah, when you know, when one company does it, then it's a cue for everybody else or every other company to yeah, do it. Like that's exactly. Netflix. Netflix canceled the yeah. fucking show, right? 
So it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Well, it's not after even that canceled. point, it, it becomes... just removed his character. They, they got rid of oh, the really? best character in the show, which yeah. was Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I, yeah. As much as I'd hate For to the last say season. it, that show without him doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Or Claire. No, you're right. It's mainly about Claire and Kevin Spacey. Together. You're completely right, yeah. Robert, yeah. yeah. I guess to, to finish my train of thought with Chris Brown... Chris Brown. There was um there's an artist that I really kind of got into for a bit, uh Joyner Lucas, and I really enjoyed his like kind of poetic storytelling hip hop. It reminded me of some like earlier Eminem in a sense where, you know, it was actually it actually felt like purposeful and I I got like a narrative kind of kind of sense mm-hmm. out of it. And then I see a tweet one day that he's like doing a collab with Chris Brown. He's like I released a new track with Chris Brown, and I had this moment in my head where I'm like, now I just it's how can I believe all of these things that you're communicating yeah, to me as an artist? You know, because like it's, it's not like business, he, when, when you're doing music, it's not so much performing as a character or maybe he was the whole time and I just didn't clue into it. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm expressing something that I'm directing. I'm creating another story. Music is, is or, you know, to a lot of people, myself included, is like an extension of your own being your own emotions and it's an expression of yourself and your feelings and communicating that to the world and i just that's the one that i'm really torn on is when i see somebody collaborating with chris brown and i'm like okay well you're making really thoughtful music otherwise but how is that i don't know maybe i'm just fucking stupid maybe i'm just a hypocrite i don't know you have to like that's that's the thing too adam that's a good point. Like, it also depends on the art you're making. Yeah. Because music requires much less people. Or, like, let's say a stand-up comedian. Like, it, all that art, all that is, is one person. And if you don't like that one person, or you know that one person was a fucking horrible guy, like Pill Cosby or something, like, how can you ever go back and appreciate his comedy? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you, you can't laugh at something he said. Because <laughs> you know he's, like, he's just a, a shit human being. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. In some ways, yeah, it, the the medium does really affect it too. Because yeah, yeah, I've never, I never thought that I would ever be a type of person to be like, oh, you collaborated with this person, and then find myself almost being, you know, distasteful for someone's works or previous works. And yet it happened to me, and I just, it's it's so strange because I never thought that that could happen. You know, I find yeah. it like yeah. being contradictory to my own beliefs in a sense. Because I try really hard not to do that. And who knows? Like, I don't understand the inner workings of A, their relationship, or B, the motivations for even doing a sort of collaboration. I don't even think I listened to the actual song yet. <laughs> you know? I was just like, yeah. in, I looked at the tweet <laughs> and I was just like, just I the had concept. This disgust in my, in my brain. But who knows? Maybe it's something I need to work on character wise. Well, when did that happen? The Chris Brown? Chris Recently, Brown. in the last fucking two or three months. Yeah. Okay. The oh, the, the beating song. Stuff. Oh, the, the beating. Violence. That was the song. Yeah. What like five to ten years ago? The beating. I was younger, so I have no recollection. Of yeah. It really. Mm. Like I just and I was never interested in Chris Brown. So maybe people just don't care anymore. That's another thing. People I, just get bored. Yeah. And stop. I guess <laughs> they're like, ah, who cares? That's 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 what happened with Woody Allen too. I don't think what Woody Allen did was nearly as bad, but you know, mm-hmm. people are like, oh, I still go see Woody Allen movies. His movies are still good. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so. Anyway, um, are we all satisfied with that uh, question? Yeah, I think so. The answer is it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. I got I got one. If you're up for Shoot. It. Yes. Shag- Shagadelic99 asks, what's the best performance you've seen wasted on a terrible movie? My answer would be, this is something someone said on Reddit. It's uh, the guy who played Obi-Wan in the Star oh, Wars Oh, McGregor. Yeah, Ewan that was McGregor. one of my choices. I think he too. did a really... He did a really good job honing in on Alec Guinness and, and getting like all the mannerisms yeah. right. And he was like a really interesting Obi Wan. And I would have loved it if he had a good script to work with or anything yeah, that's thing. to work with. You can see like a supporting cast that was good. But yeah. you know, what are you gonna do? In like a, a good versions of those films, he would be the perfect Obi Wan. Um, yes. He would have done a great a shame. job. He's fucking yeah. wasted. And he's given yeah. like the worst dialogue ever. And he mm-hmm. still somehow manages to make it sound he's okay. He's just a good actor. Yeah. Yeah. That's the interesting thing. Like, you watch the prequel scenes, and Anakin's dialogue is just awful. And yeah. Obi-Wan's dialogue is almost as bad, but he somehow manages to make it sound better mm-hmm. because he's just that good of an actor. <laughs> but mm-hmm. what are you going to do? My pick would probably be any number of the films that Michael Fassbender is in. Um, mm. I don't know what is up with <laughs> it. He must have, like, a really bad agent or something because he's just in... Yeah. <laughs> 
absolute garbage sometimes. Like, why are his talents being wasted on Assassin's Creed? You blow into the flute and I'll do the fingering. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, Covenant, he's really like, good in that movie. But exactly. it's just, fuck, it's an awful movie. Yeah. He, he's such a talented actor and I feel like he's just wasted on so many yeah. of these films. I, get, I mean, I, I suppose he's getting a big fat paycheck out of being the assassin in Assassin's Creed, but like, <laughs> come on, man. Why would you want to be? You ever seen Shame? That's the thing. Yes, I have. He's very Shame good is in that great. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm, great director. My pick, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, there was this kind of like infamous interview that he did on uh, Letterman where, I don't, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. This is like seven, oh, seven years ago yeah. or something. And he was like wearing sunglasses, like clearly fucking on something, chewing gum. And Letterman tells him to stop and he like puts the gum under the desk and he's like nervous the whole time. And it's such a sellable believable like uh, genuine thing where he it turns out he was parodying this kind of like washed up celebrity trope almost you know around the same time where i think steve-o was doing like this this thing where he's like i'm a rapper now for like he tried for like <laughs> five months or something oh, yeah. and it was like terrible when steve-o was addicted yeah. to nitrous oxide and is was ruining his brain <laughs> so apparently this was all just like this kind of meta strange promotion for this fake documentary called I'm Still Here, where they were pretending through this documentary, and it was just one big troll. Uh, they were pretending that Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix was going through like a lot of drug shit, and he was transitioning into being an aspiring rapper, and he's done with acting. And it would have been such a fucking perfect setup Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favorite actors, and he he does amazing at everything he's ever done. Mm -hmm. For from what I can tell, I guess I don't know if I've yeah. ever seen him do a bad performance. And I watched this movie, and it was just like, first of all, it was so abundantly clear that it was fake in the film, not from his performance, mm -hmm. but just the way it was filmed and like the beats of these things that happened in the movie and the characters around him. You know, like everybody around him didn't act normal or natural, so it really was a wasted performance it truly was and like everything that he did on letterman was just so entertaining and, and ambitious to me that he was able to troll all those people for a short amount of time and then the movie comes out and it's just like ugh. it was directed by casey affleck by the way for some reason uh, um, okay. but yeah it really shitty pretend fake documentary that was such a wasted opportunity that could have been really fucking cool uh, yeah. Yeah, but that, that was been. not Good. It's a shame it sucks because it sounds interesting from what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just so boring and didn't feel mm. real in the slightest. I've seen that interview with David Letterman. I didn't know that was fake. I just thought that was a real interview. No. I always yeah, thought he was, he was in was character a, was a for this <laughs> fake documentary. Wow, I fucking love him so much more. Yeah, now. he's awesome. Thank you for I love me know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I just saw him. I'm like, wow, what a dick bag. He showed up to David Letterman's show chewing gum. The reason why you that. didn't know that is because nobody saw this fucking movie because it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a shit. It was just a shitty movie. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. It was well. truly a waste. Yeah. I guess that's that one. All right. We want to do uh, one more question? Yeah. Alex, you got it? Uh, yeah. I got a good one here Let's from do it. El Glitcho. What is the most obnoxious slash lazy camera technique to see in films? Also, has it ever been used well? Mm. Digital zoom-ins. Yeah. That count? Were you were you zoom in in post production? Oh, I okay. Fucking, post zoom. I yeah. can't stand that shit. It's yeah, terrible. Right. Like in Woody Woodpecker. It's, it's <laughs> terrible when you can notice it, and you're like, the pixels are getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you notice it every time they fucking do it. Every time. And whenever I see it, I'm like, don't do that. It always looks bad. Yeah. Just zoom in on the real camera. Why not just do it on the real camera? It depends. It's no. one of those things where if it had, <laughs> hey, hold on. <laughs> if, okay, go ahead. If it has been done well enough that you wouldn't notice, then you didn't notice it, right? So I guess that's true. I'm I'm willing to assume that there have been instances where it has been done in a way that wasn't bullshit. Okay, right? well then, in that case, it's been done very subtly so that the filmmaker knew yeah. digital zoom-ins look like shit. So let me try really hard to make sure it doesn't look like a shitty digital yeah. zoom-in. In which case, the filmmaker is actually doing it, but acknowledging it's bad and trying to fix it. Yeah. So I think it would answer. fall into the same category as people who, you know, say like, all oh, CG is terrible, but it's just like, you only notice terrible CG when it's terrible CG, and when mm -hmm. it's not, you don't notice it. You know, it's just one of those yeah, things, I think. 
So who knows? Mm. I think it's probably been done fine before. Or just maybe we'll really subtly look it up. also. Mm-hmm. What about you, Alex? My pick would be um, shaky cam. Um, when, when it's used, because it has been used properly before, um, when there's a, a shaky cam action fight scene, there is nothing more mind-numbing and just frustrating about it. You just want the camera to be far back so you can see choreography or any kind of planning because it's just it's just lazy to me they're just mm -hmm. it's just a cheap way to skip over the actors not having to learn anything because you can just shake everything and cut really quickly so you can yeah. barely tell what's going on i remember it was a really bad instance of it i think it was taken three or something it was <laughs> when so, he jumps the fence so bad <laughs> oh that that i'm yeah. in the description 13 you can't tell what's going on yeah. It's so funny. I mean, Total Alex, nonsense. that's partly that's partly the editing too. Is that the editing and all? Yeah, those yeah, scenes, true, when it's true, poorly true. Done is just a fucking um, mess. But yeah, yeah, I think there are instances when that's done well. Yeah, yeah, I, I think most if it's like a technique that people know, chances are it comes from someone using it well, right? Like it has yeah. to. Yeah. It's not going to be a technique that you don't use, right? Like, I, I just get fed up sometimes of people using the camera shake just even on scenes where it's completely unnecessary there's this show on netflix called um bloodline i don't know if you guys have seen any of it but no they really overdo just not even there's not even action scenes it's just really simple shot reverse shot mostly kind of character interactions but it's always fucking shaking it's like just goddamn put it on a tripod and yeah. keep this keep it still it's really distracting to me it, it's annoying when like it the camera shakes for no reason. Yeah. When mm. Paul Greengrass, Paul Greengrass does handheld all the time. Yeah, but yeah. It only shakes a lot when he's running or when mm -hmm. a character like, in a plane. Yeah, when it makes sense. But like there, like you said, Alex, there's these scenes where people talk and they just shake the fucking camera for yeah. no reason. Yeah. It's like yeah. there's no reason for the camera to be shaking. Very there annoying. are instances. Even if someone was holding it, abused. it would be pretty still. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Although I would say, yeah. like in reference to like fight scenes, that is a bit of a combination of two different problems yeah the yeah quick yeah quick cuts and the shaky cam in order to mask the fact that they're not actually fighting and nothing's actually happening yeah i can't yeah, tell exactly. what's going on well you're not supposed to because they didn't show <laughs> yeah. anything yeah <laughs> well, there, there's exceptions for every single one of these things yeah. that annoy yeah. us i saw a movie basically i've i've had a really tough time um finding bollywood movies that i like in the sense that i haven't liked a single one and <laughs> i guess people figured that out or i mentioned it and then there was like a reddit thread of like oh here's some great indian movies to recommend to adam so i watched a few of them and a lot of them had <laughs> were, were very annoying and i just <laughs> couldn't get into them um one of them did something that i had never seen done before in a film they used post-production stabilization in a shot like oh, that, that basically really? like that YouTube fucking plug-in filter. And I was watching yeah. the shot. And I was like, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> You're using post stabilization. Oh, that just pissed me off to no end. The movie was kind of bad aside from that anyway. But that was one thing that really bothered me, I guess, in terms of, of like overall in the film industry. One of my biggest fucking pet peeves in terms of lazy, lazy as shit camera tricks, I guess is um, in horror movies especially, showing a character or showing something in the background or showing anything, cutting to <laughs> cutting to the side, showing the character's face or something, like doing something for like two seconds, cutting back to the same shot, ooh, something's different. Like, oh, I don't know what happened in that space of time where the camera wasn't on this thing. I hate that shit. It happened all the time in The Stranger's that was a really annoying mm. fucking one where it's like they're dicking around in the background. The character doesn't even see them anyway. Who yeah. is that for? It's only it's for the audience. It's only there for the audience. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. when that fucking <laughs> yeah. happens. That happened in that new fucking Truth or Dare movie. There was like some graffiti on the wall and then the character doesn't, you know, close shot of the character, cut back to the wall and it's like, oh, it's different. Yeah, yeah. They do that it was annoying. Who is that for? Don't I don't even think it was a cut in that one. I think they just digitally did it. They went past it and went back in one shot. But still... That's an annoying, mm. annoying thing in movies for me is just, oh, something's different. When you look at it again, it was out of frame. Now it's back in frame. Oh, <laughs> so scary. <laughs> like, how? who's scared by that? Uh, lots of people are because these movies make a lot of money. Yeah, that's so. true. All right. You're wrong, Adam. 
I guess uh, I guess, I guess that wraps it. up uh, questions. Good job, everybody. We did it. We made it through another one. Hell yeah. I guess I it's my turn to recommend a movie, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, boy. And I'm still I've got you know I've got I've got a list of some things here. I guess I guess I've got all the time in the world. I can just recommend something else another time. I'm still having a really fucking mm-hmm. tough time with this, but I think there's one of them that I want to rewatch again more than any of them right now because I haven't seen it in a, in a while, and it's one of my favorites. I think it's from. Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, director of Birdman and The Revenant. Okay. Mm. And uh, it's his first film, I believe. I'm just going to look it up right now. I think it is his first film, uh, director credit. Yeah, he directed some shorts. And then Amores Peros, 2000. It's Mexican. It's got Gael Garcia Bernal in it. And um, Mm. it is a uh, long-ish film. It's two and a half hours long. But it is uh, probably my favorite movie from him, and uh, okay. I really want to watch, watch it again. List. So uh, thank you. Yeah, nice. I've always wanted to watch more of this guy's stuff. Oh yeah, I've only ever seen yeah. Birdman. How much? And uh, Revenant. Oh really? I yeah, that's I'm, it. I'm, yeah, I'm with Ralph, Okay, yeah. cool. Because this one, yeah, um, so this is great. Yeah, this one I think started um, kind of like a thematic trilogy-ish kind of thing in a way. They're not related at all, but it, you know, in, in the same way that, yeah, I guess Cornetto trilogy is a thing. I guess that's kind of different. So I think this yeah. one, Twenty One Grams and Babel, uh, were all kind of the same thematic trilogy kind of thing, and this one's easily the best one, and uh, this would be the only other Inyari two film that I uh, love as much as Birdman, although very, very different. So okay, mm-hmm. cool. Bro. All right. Good shit. Thank you. No problem. I guess oh, that uh, wraps it up. Yeah, I just want to watch that, that fucking it. movie again. You know, that's the biggest reason <laughs> yeah. I'm recommending it. Yeah. Can't wait to watch this fucking movie again. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you, everybody, that's for that. listening to our uh, podcast. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for somebody else to yeah, say Yeah, just end it right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to end this. We we did a pretty good job this time, so I have nothing yeah. left to say. So long, Make suckers. Sure you subscribe and uh, we're nearly at, um, If you want to support so, uh, us, some of us have Patreons. Otherwise, just subscribe to our channels. All the links are in the descriptions. Bye. Oh yeah. Bye. <laughs> bye.